we are one. Hey fam, welcome back to my channel. Hello everybody. How are we all doing? It's good to be back with you this evening. How is everybody doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're coming by for the first time, you're welcome as well. This is virtual grace. Thank you all so much for coming. I look forward to an exciting conversation tonight again. I have someone who is coming to join up, um, join us on the show today, my friend, obviously. Uh, I'm so excited because she is a professional and she's going to do justice to this topic at hand. So, um, welcome in. As you come, click the like button. You know the drill already. Share the stream. Uh, let's have more people coming. Share, share, share. Share the stream. Okay. So we can have more people in the chat room tuning in to the show. We are going to be discussing, like you've seen already in the in the title and the thumbnail, we are going to be discussing the investment opportunities that exist or will exist in Africa post-COVID-19. Um, I've gotten quite some questions in the past, you know, about the business environment in Nigeria, um, the investment opportunities and all of that. So I thought to bring someone in today to... Um, to help do justice to that so welcome ah i forgot oh my goodness how could i happy father's day to all the amazing fathers on this platform you guys are just amazing for everything you do we just want to say thank you um thank you so much to all the fathers um you do so much you do so much carriers on your shoulders you teach us and um, you're parting us a lot of knowledge and you know ideas and principles just to get us on the right track in life so we appreciate all of you fathers today happy father's day um come in let's you know let's celebrate together even as we have discussions and what a day to be discussing this all important topic we know how important um finances are and to the family and oftentimes the fathers are the ones who bear the 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 burden of the finances of the family so it's an opportunity for us to discuss more ways of probably making more money post covid 19 um exploring the investment space in africa so welcome in if as you are coming in give a thumbs up you know thumb up on the show share let's have more people uh, coming my guests will be joining us shortly. I just want us to have more people in the stream. And then we start off fully. Thank you from the United States, Arlington, Texas. Thank you so much, A. Collins. Thank you. We miss you already in Ghana. Oh, I miss you guys too. I miss Ghana so much. Um, I look forward to definitely coming back to Ghana sometime soon. Uh, and to say my daughter, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. So let's have more people come and share the stream. Share the stream. Yes, get the likes up. Let's have the likes up. Let's have the likes up and then. And then we'll definitely um, start share the stream as well um focus on infrastructure Yes, infrastructure, infrastructural development is definitely very important. We need all of that in Africa. We need infrastructural development in Africa. Thank you so much. And to, I'm going to I'll continue. Thank you so much. Everybody's welcome. Bishop Akeri, you're welcome. Mike, Mag, 
Magaski. You're welcome as well. Thank you, Mike. Um, Tidos Beatley, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Tidos, for Tidos for coming. Thank you. Um, so my guest is coming in. She's joining us now. Someone says Toronto, Canada. Looking forward to the life. Thank you, um, Carl. Carl Black, you're welcome. Definitely, it's going to be an exciting discussion. Hi, good morning, Silfre Joseph. Hi, Joseph. SME industry in Africa. Yes. Um, my guest is going to attempt to answer all of that. So just stay tuned. She's joining us shortly. She's joining us shortly. Um, you're all welcome, so much welcome. Blessed child, hi. Tikali, hi. Hi, Tikali, you're welcome. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. Um, work for Global Peace USA Blessed. Hello, I can invest. Of course, I'm sure the information you will get today from the show would help you make proper investment decisions. I think I should sit up. PG rated, you're welcome. Welcome, PG rated. Good morning. It's good evening, Nigerian time. It's for 6 or 7 p.m. Nigerian time. So I would say good evening to you. All oh, welcome. I want to sit up. Ubuntu. Yes, Ubuntu. King Kenya, Ken you're welcome. Thank you. I am because we are exactly. That's the philosophy of Ubuntu. I am because you are. I have your back and you have my back. That's the philosophy of Ubuntu. We have each other's back. We need to get rid of the name Africa and African and also Black. Africa is a colonizer name and Black is a color. We are brown skin and brown have many different shades. Yes, I agree with you. Brown has different shades. I'm one shade of brown. Another person is another shade. Aseye Enterprises LLC, you're welcome. Thank you so much for coming. Um, let's have this discussion going already. Bless child. Here is 7 p.m. Where is that? Okay. I like this. So I'm glad you are in the right place. With the right information now. Salute from London. Welcome, everybody. Oh, welcome. And happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the house. Happy Father's Day to you. Hope you have all received special gifts today. Fathers in the house, fathers in the waiting, and all. Hope you've all received gifts from children and the special people in your lives. So you know how a lot of 
things have gone um, down in this period of COVID-19. A lot of economies are crunching, so many financial decisions to be made um, in order to secure um, the future. So a lot of people have been asking questions. Okay, Vandros, 8, 10 p.m. in Nairobi. Good evening. So we want to discuss how um, we can invest the business opportunities that exist in Africa that we can explore post COVID-19. My my guest is trying to join. How come I can't see her? My, my my guest is trying to come up so just some little technical hitches i'm not ignoring you mm, welcome everybody sorry about that we'll get it sorted shortly greetings from france cold manism thank you thank you welcome happy father's day i love your hair thank you studio beats thank you so much mm. I was just going to re oh I like this. Let me see. I was just going to research on how to invest in Africa and happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Okay, Black Panther. That means you're in the right place. I'm glad. Um, for me, I thought that this topic is very timely because of of obviously the global um issues that are happening now. A lot of people wanting to make decisions, financial decisions, and also. It's important for us to have this um, discussion, this conversation. So um, we will be like shortly. So guys, my guest is up on the show. Um, this lady, this beautiful lady smiling on the screen is my friend and sister. Uh, I've meant, I think I mentioned in, in my previous streams that um, when I first moved to Lagos, um, I was staying with two of my friends um, interchangeably. So there were times I stayed with her and she was so hospitable. And uh -huh. the other one, I will find time to also bring her up on the show so, so that you guys will meet her. No. So, this is what so welcome oh, hi, to everyone. Yes, so Thank let's you. You introduce yourself. Hi everyone, my name is Stephanie. Vetri Grace is actually a friend, turned sister, so we're actually very close. And she actually invited me for the show, and I'm so honored and privileged to be here. Thank you, all of you, for being amazing. You guys are really, really amazing. Thank you. Yeah, so um from Stephanie always, you know, she always watches my videos and we just drop comments and like when we have conversation back door, you know, backstage, she'll be like, Oh Grace, your 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 subscribers are so supportive, they're so amazing, you know. So she has been there. Her house was like one of the first studios I had. Um shooting videos at home in her, her apartment, of course, and all just so supportive. And you know, she knows everything about the story from the beginning. So that's pretty much it about her. I just want you guys to meet her. And Stephanie, I would like for you to introduce yourself. I you know more of your professional um, background and all of that, just so that we set the stage right. So let's meet you. Okay, uh, fine. In addition to my I don't know you anymore, so let me know you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
in addition to my earlier introduction, I'm Stephanie and I'm a chartered accountant by profession. I can precisely. And I currently work with a financial institution. Um, the financial department is where I, I actually work and I am a professional accountant and I'm honored to be here. So anything financial related, I think you can count on me to give you some tips and some guides. All right, thank you. All right, so um, from you heard that Stephanie is a chartered accountant. Um, just the countless sleepless nights, just studying all night, I was there. You know, I know the story, how hard she studied, you know. She's just someone who is very uh, motivated, self-motivated. And I think that's one thing we share, like, she's self-motivated. I'm also self-motivated. So she's the, the type that sets goals and goes all out, you know, to achieve her goals. So I love her so much as my friend and sister, like I said. So Stephanie, let's start, first of all, just give us a brief insight or background to the um, business investment you know space in nigeria how is it like or how was it like even before the covid um situation if someone okay. wanted to invest you know how it was like okay oh um before even the covid 19 nigeria in particular has been experiencing um some challenges in its um, economy somehow but um um with the coming of the covid 19 we we'll all agree that the covid 19 has been a disaster for all nations of the world right and um particularly for africa we we can see that the effect of this COVID-19 is actually substantially more than every other country, all right? So Africa has experienced more impact compared to other countries. And this is basically because um, Africa has already um, been existing in poverty somehow for a while before even the coming of the COVID-19, all right? So, and that is why I feel it is important as we Africans to critically consider and be creative and come out with a plan and strategy on how to survive through the aftermath of this COVID, uh, you know, because um, before now, uh, let's say like in, in January, in January, um, the African Development Bank had projected that the, there was going to be a slight growth in the it's African like economy, a growth in the African economy of 3.9% growth in the African economy. That was a projection by the African Development Bank. All right. And um, a further 4.1% growth in 2021. All right. But we saw that with the coming of this COVID in just the first two months of the outbreak and with a record of just 61 cases, this projection was quickly reversed. It was revised and it was brought downward to two, just just two percent, you know. So we can say that as African, we are facing more of this impact because our growth is not as compared to the Western countries. All right. So because we have already been existing in poverty, and this has actually even hit us economically. And I remember that um, the World Bank also mentioned that with this outbreak, that Africans are actually heading towards recession. And so it is very, very important that we also now look at the opportunities that may arise for us in this period and also beyond this period, and then also take advantage of it. So um, I would like to mention a few because you agree with me that in as much as so many sectors of the economy experienced this big hit as a result of the COVID-19, um, there are still exceptions to some sectors that actually experienced some significant growth in this period. So when we look at the telecommunication companies, we look at the digital companies, we look at the health sector, we look at every sector that is technologically enabled, we see that if you look at their growth in this period, it actually experienced a boom. So these sectors now are very, very good and lucrative grounds for us to key into, for we that might be considering investing in stock. 
So because these these sectors experienced a boom in this period, and so it is very very profitable if we are considering investing in stock. Then I would advise that going to uh, um, subscribe to stock in these companies is going to be very very pro um, um, profitable for us, and it's going to yield a high return on our investment. But um, also, I would say that um, investors, you have to consider what is your goal. Are you looking at a long term goal or a short term goal? So, if you're looking at a long term goal, then you also can consider areas that were also affected by this pandemic. We we're talking about the travel and leisure sector, sectors because these areas, even though they had declined in operations and their income were quite low during this period, but in time, in years come, they are going to experience, their stock is going to rise. So if you're looking at a long-term investment, then you can also key into this and then gradually uh, the aftermath it's once the aftermath is over, and then in years, they are going to experience an appreciation in their stock. And then with that, your investment is going to be quite profitable as well. So this is also um, something that you need to consider. What is your goal? Are you looking at short term or long term? So if you are actually trying to build a support system that is, is going to be resilient to this uh, COVID-19 effect, then you quickly can take advantage of the companies or the sectors that experienced a growth in this COVID-19. So with that, you can you can actually even get your return short term, and then it's going to be a good investment anyway. So um, that's partly what I would advise that you consider, you know, for to also build against the the impact of this COVID-19. Okay. I'm, I'm quickly taking down questions that people are, ask, are asking so that you can address them shortly. So I've heard what you said, and I also had a question I wanted to ask based on what you said. Um, you, you mentioned invest, investing in stock, that for people considering investing in Nigeria, they can consider investing you know, in stock, especially in the telecoms industry, because it's experiencing a boom at the time, as well as the health sector. So my quick yeah. question is, can non-Nigerians, because we have people who are not Nigerians watching as well, can they invest in, in the stock market in Nigeria? Yes, they can. They can invest. Because okay, it's, so it's, it's don't give us insights into that. So, and, and also, the and also, process, what are the requirements, you know, the process, the requirements, and all. Okay, um, investing in stock in Nigeria, you just go through the Nigerian Stock Exchange, you know, so each company actually um, advertises its own stock on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So you go through that, you get all the requirements, and then everything that is required, the processes and all that, you follow through. So the Nigerian Stock Exchange is where you go and search for the companies, and then there, they, they, it is it is all clearly stated out there the value of the stock and at how much the um, the stock goes for and every requirement and all that. So it's basically cut across other nations. It's not restricted to just Nigeria. So the procedure is actually stated out there, but um, that's that's for investment. So there are other business opportunities that. Okay, if you want to key, um, establish a business in Nigeria, that also is quite different. That way you don't go through the stock market. So for that one, um, permit me to also bring that in. Like maybe you want to bring, you want to establish a, a business opportunity. You want to establish a business. You want to own a business in Nigeria. So that's the one that um, is quite different. What, what you need to go to do is you, are, you, you obtain an approval from the Nigeria Trade and Investment Industry. That's the Ministry of Trade and Investment. So you're going to obtain an approval because you are a non-citizen of the country. So you have to get that approval to be able to establish a business in Nigeria. Then um, you have to register with the CAC and all that. So after you register with the CAC, automatically you are registered on the by the Federal Inland Revenue for Tax Matters because you can't be in business without paying your tax. So, um, but then 
if you want to avoid the process of obtaining approval from the investment uh, ministry of trade and investment then you have to have a nigerian as your director so even if, if a nigerian is actually the director of your company then that process is actually cut off the process of getting approval from the ministry of trade and investment so it's cut off then you have to register with the cac and then there is what they call pre-operation fee, which you have to pay to the FRS. That's the Federal Inland Revenue Service. So that, um, I, think, I think it's about 25,000 or so, yeah. So you have to pay that fee to the Federal Inland Revenue. Then following tax, for tax matters, of course, um, going by the new finance law of 2019, the amended finance law, um the companies that are liable to company income tax are just uh, companies that have their revenue their annual revenue above 25 million 25, 25 million yes 25 million naira. so those are the ones that are subject to company income tax so if your turnover is 25 million and above then you have to on a yearly basis, pay tax to the Federal Inland Revenue. Otherwise, you are exempted from that tax. So establishing business in Nigeria. Sorry, sorry my dear, sorry, I'll pause a bit. Glorious hmm. Park, um, I can see the comments you are dropping in the, in the comment section. Please, um, I won't I won't take that, please. If you have any contribution you want to make to this conversation, hold on. I'm going to let you come up on the show and make your contribution if you don't if if you feel like what is happening here is i've never been mad at anybody please don't let me block you from here please let's continue continue my dear. okay also for 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 companies that uh their turnover is above one um 25 million are the ones that are subject to state and company income tax right so if your come if your turnover is less than twenty five million, then um, you are exempted from company income tax. Then for for investment in stock, you can get full details through the Nigerian Stock Exchange, and then you follow that procedure. Thank you. Okay, um, so I'm pretty sure those who are in the chat room. They, they 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 got what you said and for anybody if you have questions you want to ask her please feel free to drop the questions in the comments uh, in the chat room i'm going to echo those questions for her to answer you so now we've established that no nigerians can also invest in the nigerian stock exchange market just you know they'll have to go through the procedures that you've you've, you've stated out going through the nigerian stock exchange the federal in, uh, in the FIRS, the Federal Inland Revenue, right? And that no, they they go through the Nigerian Stock Exchange. While those that want to establish businesses in Nigeria, we go through obtaining approval from the Ministry of Trade and Investment, and then go through CAC okay. documentation, and then courses across FIRS for tax matters. Yes. So I actually spoke about okay. investment and then establishing businesses in Nigeria. Then I, I will also want to mention that agriculture is also a very, very lucrative um, ground to, to actually um, thrive on if you are considering investment in Nigeria because there is um, this agri-tech investment which is also very, very profitable. And I think that eliminates your physical presence in the farm um, using, um, you know, um, having to buy land, having to be present in the farm, buying stuff that, you know, managing the farm pest and all of that. So it's basically a digital farming. So it's an investing in um, agri-tech is also very, very good to key into because looking at uh, Nigeria particularly, where um, the government was, the government initially before the coming of the, the, the outbreak, were looking towards um, diversifying the economy from the oil dependence to other sectors and agriculture is one of the focus you know the government actually started this by um the closure of the borders mm -hmm. of um detail. so it actually stopped importation of good that was to encourage the local farming all right so with investing in agri-tech 
is going to eliminate your exposure to the farm. And then all you need to do is make your investment and then sit and await your return. So there are different startup agri-tech um, investment opportunities. So you, you um, I think um, you, you can just go check on them and then because some are for livestock, some are for crops and they have different um, percentage of uh, return and different periods and all of that. So investing in agriculture is very, very key and it's going to yield a high return in the coming years, particularly for Nigeria, yes. Okay, okay. thank you so much there for that. Um, just before we continue, if you have just tuned in, please don't forget to click the subscribe button and to share this stream. This is very important. Welcome to the show, Eunice. It's, co it's good to have you. That Eunice is in the house, my amazing sister. She's particularly interested in investing in Nigeria. She has asked me several questions in the past, so I'm so glad she's here today to, um, you know, to listen to this conversation herself. Eunice is also one of my moderators. So Eunice, you have my permission to time out anyone who is, you know, posting trolls in the com in the chat room. I'm not going to tolerate that today on this show because we are serious. Last um, stream, a lot of trolls were in the chat room and just misbehaving. We have to be serious. This we are serious minded here. We are not here to play. So, um, you need to have my permission. Anyone who misbehaves or who drops trolls in the chat room, time the person out. You know, let the person just stay somewhere and let's have this conversation when when we are ready to play the person can come back and let's play we love to play too but now it's time for curious business like i was saying the the covid 19 pandemic has come with a lot of economic heat on the economies of the world so people need information to make the right um economic and financial decisions that's why we are doing this Okay, so now, um, Steph, sorry for, for that little break. You mentioned about investing in the agri-tech. I've seen quite a few of them online, you know, um, some that invest in rice farming, piggery, poultry, and all of that. So the question that any investor would be asking is, how safe are these investments in this, you know, agri-tech that you are talking about? Are they insured? Okay, um, I would say that um, the agri-tech investment is not highly regulated, but then um, for everyone that wants to take up that opportunity, you first of all, after um, deciding on which area uh, in that um, agri-tech sector you want to invest in, you have to also confirm from SEC, that Security and Exchange Commission. So you have to make your verification and your confirmation from SEC before undertaking such investment so um okay. it's it's highly yes so it's highly okay. a risk hello can you hear i i you you, you said you have to make inquiries from sec y yes you have to make okay. inquiries from sec is security and exchange commission okay security so, commission. commission yes so you okay. have to make your confirmation from sec then when you get the approval to go ahead with that, then I guarantee you that it's secured and then you can go ahead with that. Okay. So yeah. there's a question on the screen. Can you see it? The question on the screen. Okay. Um, Who do you co invest with if you do? I think this person asking this might not be a Nigerian. You know, the person, um, you talked about non-Nigerians being able to invest in the Nigerian economy, but you mentioned something that if th there's an aspect of investment that they would need a Nigerian to be their director. So I guess that's um, what the person needs clarification on. No, that's for business opportunities. For you want to establish a business in Nigeria, okay. you want to own a business in Nigeria. All right. So um, if you want to avoid the process of going through obtaining approval from the Ministry of Trade and Investment, then you can have an Nigerian director in okay. that company. So that way, it bycots the processes of obtaining your know, approval from the uh, Ministry of Trade and Commission. So it's it's basically not a co-investor, but then having a director that is a Nigerian who is overseeing those affairs. Because I, I know that People that are not based in Nigeria, that want to have business in Nigeria, you know that um, you might not be um, significantly present to oversee the operations of the company. So you can have a Nigerian registered as your director of the company. So that way, you're going to avoid the processes of 
involving approval from the Ministry of Trade and Investment. Okay, someone is asking, what is co-invest? I think that's that's what she, she has explained, basically. I think pulling your resources together with someone to invest in a particular business um, venture, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's for business opportunity. That's if you want to. That's to establish a to establish, to establish a business in Nigeria. You have to bring in someone who. But co-invest is just like you have, you ha, you 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 are making you are doing an investment where it's being contributed from by two persons. So it's not just you alone taking that investment. You have someone that is taking part of the investment. So you are jointly doing that investment together. So the person is your co-investor okay you know so, so that yes go on that that is quite different from having a director to oversee your business opportunities in nigeria okay your so business. someone is saying i would want to invest from canada can you recommend any apps to invest through i want to invest in dangote group okay um you can get information on dangote company precisely on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, because I don't I don't work in those um, establishments, so I wouldn't want to give you an information that is not valid. So you can go to um, Nigerian Stock Exchange and then look through um, the company um, that precisely. So they are going to state if there is actually a current investment opportunity in Dangote, it will be clearly stated, and then you can go through the requirements okay. and then you know take up the opportunity here. Yeah. Okay. Um, someone was actually asking um, the website to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So I'm going to search that and drop it in the chat room so you can see it. Um, it's just as spelt, the Nigerian Stock Exchange, www.nse.com.ng. So I'm going to call up that website. I'm calling it up. Once it comes up, I'll copy it and paste it here. So you can go there and check The Rachel, are you there? Sorry about yeah, that. But... There was a small break in transmission. So um, before I left, I was about to ask you a question that someone answered. This person obviously is an African-American. So the person asked, how does an African-American get basic bank information to start a business in Nigeria? How does an American get basic facts? Bank information to start a business here. So I'm, I'm guessing that would be like opening a bank account and all of the processes. Um, is it possible for a non-Nigerian to open a bank account in Nigeria to start with? And if yes, how can they go about it? Okay, um, I, it's, it, I think it's, it's possible for, for a, Nigerian, um, a Nigerian who is based abroad to open an account here. All right. This, it, what, what of a non-Nigerian? Okay, a non-Nigerian. Uh, I, I, I don't say it because there are some processes that are involved. 
like um you can you can you can require if you have someone that you quite trust to facilitate that for you here then fair enough because there are there are these processes that are required by cbn you have to know your customers you have to know where the customer is based um his own permanent resident here in the country all right so if you don't have a permanent resident here where you can be traced to in in, a, in an event of any um arising um, issue then it's it, it becomes very complicated so for that i i feel okay you can get someone who is reliable who you can operate that account through so i think that is more proper on the world um i would i would prefer to say that if you are in nigeria then it is very possible you know it is very possible so you can go through the app check the requirements online and then you follow through okay so it's easier for a nigerian living abroad to open a bank account than for a non-nigerian a non-nigerian would require to go through a nigerian in order to uh, obtain all the necessary documentations to open yeah, a that bank account. yeah okay yeah, definitely. all right so someone is asking so would, um would the person said he would like to know how to invest from trinidad and tobago in the caribbean um basically that's what she has explained so you have to go to the nigerian stock exchange website yeah. and you obtain all the information that you you need there and you obtain i think you mentioned said the nigeria's um, security and exchange commission no nigerian stock exchange is where you see the investment opportunities that are currently available so that is where you see the current um opportunities that are available and the requirements you know that is where companies come to showcase and to advertise the opportunities that are available so when you go through that you see companies that are currently selling their stock how much the stock is being valued and all of that so when you go through the nigerian stock exchange you get all this information you know okay so that's so where, i yeah. just okay i just dropped the the website address of the nigerian stock exchange in the chat room so you can click on it later and then you obtain all the information that you need as far as stock and all the um, available investment opportunities in Nigeria are concerned. You can go yes. there and check but, all of that. So like I earlier mentioned, um, while in the process of doing the registration, then that is when uh, Nigerian stock, um, the Security and Exchange Commission comes in. But in obtaining the required information, you go to the Nigerian Stock Exchange and do that. But you have to get your facts straight on the name um, because um, subscribing to those investments will require you going through the Nigeria and the Security and Exchange Commission, you know. So, but when you go through the requirement on the Nigerian Stock Exchange, that is um, for every other company, for companies that are advertising their stock out there, then you see the requirement. I mentioned that the, for agri tech particularly, is actually being regulated. It's well regulated, but to be on the safer side and to avoid all risk, you have to have your confirmations on the SEC, um, SEC which is um, Security and Exchange Commission, before you can now go ahead with your investment in agri-tech. Right? And then once you go through the Nigerian Stock Exchange, you have to also track stocks that are liquid. You know, you look at how good the stock is what is their financials you go through the financials are they profitable what is their what is their um uh, what is their balance sheet does this um does this company have a good worth what is their worth what is their operations like are they very profitable um uh, then when you look at the good financials that the company has then you know that it's a good ground to invest and then you also do your own valuation like know the stock value and what is the earnings per share? Because when you are buying stock, you are looking at buying the shares of that company. So also now do your own valuation. Like what is this, what is the earnings per share? So that will actually will guide you on the profitable investments that you need to put into, you know. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, Steph. Just for you to reiterate, um, because some people have just come into the chat room. So um, just quickly mention the, the broad sectors that you said are booming now, especially for people who are looking at short-term investment um, within the COVID-19 situation. Now, there were specific um, sectors of the economy that you said are, you know, are booming now, sort of. They are, they are 
return on investment seem more promising so that those who who didn't catch that from the beginning can you know get up to speed okay i i, I <laughs> said that there's actually, the covid 19 actually brought about a big hit on some sectors of the economy but however there are still some sectors that experience significant growth in this period and to mention a few particularly i said this telecommunication company the digital company the digital company even the health sector and even the food producers you know uh and then so every every tech enabled company definitely has experienced a very 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 high and significant growth in this period so if you are looking at short-term investment short-term goal then if you go into um these sectors like if you invest into these sectors then I, I i assure you that you're going to get a very high return on your investment because they are actually doing well now and even beyond covid 19 they will definitely experience like significant growth in their operations because as we see that this COVID-19 has made the world to look towards digital, digital. So everybody is now trying to go digital in operations. We see that most people now get to do online transactions more often and all that. So the digital world is really, really topping now. And then so keen into this is going to actually even help us um, get a high return if we have to invest in such areas. All right. Then, okay. if you want to consider a long-term effect, you know, when when buying stock, you look at low-value stock, they have every tendency of appreciating in years to come. So, if your goal is on long-term, then you can take advantage of these companies that actually experience a decline in their operation, in their income during this COVID-19. The likes of the travel and the leisure sectors, you know, so their stock might appear very low now to invest in, but in time, like let's say in, in years to come, they are definitely going to appreciate. So at that point, you will get a high return on your investment. So if you're looking at long-term investment, then you can take advantage of these companies that experienced like um, a significant downturn during this period. Okay. Um. There's a question on the screen. Uh, I'm not a Nigerian. I need to know if an uh, international bank is there. Uh, it's like this person wants to know if we have international banks in Nigeria. Stephanie. Um, yes, we do have. Um, um, like the Standard Chartered Bank is actually an international bank. So we do have Standard Chartered Bank precisely is an international bank. So we have that in Nigeria. You can try, yeah. Fam, drop your questions um, because Stephanie has limited time on the show. So as many questions as you would like to ask her, please drop them now. Let me echo them for her to answer before she goes off. The investment questions that you've been asking or that you want to know about investing in Nigeria um, or Africa, just drop the questions now. And so those before the questions come, uh, I would just like to know, do you think that um, especially for now that um, COVID-19 is here and these sectors in Nigeria that you've mentioned are uh, experiencing a rise um, posi positively on their uh, you know, return on investment. Do you think or would you say is the same for other African countries or is just Nigeria? Because someone might want to invest, maybe not in Nigeria, but in other African countries. So do you think it's the same thing that would apply in other African countries as well? Yes. Of course, it's, it's the same thing that will apply for other African countries because if, you, if you're looking at telecommunication precisely, it's, um, the lockdown was uh, cut across all African countries. So the lockdown was able to increase the level at which people now do transactions online. Like particularly, if I, if I have to mention the mobile payments. Now, so most people now decide and they had to um, eliminate the risk that was involved in handling cash and then they were able to like, now do more of online transactions. So for African countries, for all African countries that are involved in 
you know, digital, that are actually even taking advantage of the digital aspect, then definitely they are going to uh, experience like a high um, income or a high growth in this period. You know, like I would recommend, I would say FinTech. FinTech is actually also a good ground because is um is a mobile payment is a mobile payment company and it sure has experienced a significant growth in this way. So like fintech now we have um the um Safari can the Kenya Safari can so that is definitely Safari in Kenya. Con, yeah. yeah the 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 Safari can in Kenya so if if you if one can take advantage of that investing in that company definitely you are going to have a high return because they operate mobile money services, which is a good ground for us to like take advantage of and invest in this time where most people prefer to stay at home. They don't, they want to avoid the risk of handling cash and most transactions are being done online. So when you get into, when you check across Africa, which, which um, telecommunication companies exist across Africa, which companies are digitally, um, uh, operate digitally, you know, and all of that. So every technological enabled company across Africa, not just particularly in Nigeria, has experienced a significant boom in this period. So taking advantage of those those um, areas to like make your investment will definitely give you a high return on your investment during this period and even after the COVID-19. Okay. So um, someone has asked the question that how can we invest in metals like gold, silver, and such minerals also? So this person is looking at gold, silver, and you know all those other natural minerals. So how can they go about? Is the same process of going through, for instance, the Nigerian Stock Exchange in Nigeria and all the process you mentioned earlier? Yes, because I I wouldn't throw more light on that because I I I really don't. Um, work in that sector. So I would say to get the information that is required, you can go through the Nigerian Stock Exchange to get the, the, the information that you need if you have to invest in this area. Okay. So um, Studio Beat, I think your question is what she answered earlier before she answered the one she just did. The status of investing in technology in Africa, she just mentioned it that um, a lot of companies that are digitally inclined are experiencing a boom now. So for you to um, invest, of course, in Nigeria, for instance, you go through the Nigerian Stock Exchange and you obtain the information on those companies and how you can go about investing in those companies. And especially if you are looking at short term, these companies hold good promise uh, of high, high return on investment, especially in this COVID-19 situation. But if you are looking at the longer term uh, investment, you know, you have to consider other um, sectors of the economy, like the hospitality, travel and leisure. Yeah, those two. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so I think that basically answers you. More questions. If you have more questions, drop. And Stephanie, thank you so much. You are, you are, you are giving us answers. Then there was something that... Um, I saw online that I wanted to ask you to just help us make sense of it because a lot of people are interested when it comes to the issue of Nigeria and China. Um, that the Chinese government said they were going to easily write off some of Africa's debt and all of that. So just help us make sense of that. What does that mean for the African economy? Um, just help us make sense of it. Okay, um, virtually, like I earlier said, that the, the African economy itself had experienced a more significant impact compared to other countries of the world. So, um, for for the China and the, for the China government to take this um, decision, then it's actually a very good development for the Africans who are already in a serious economic crisis as a result of this COVID. All right. So um, I feel this is actually a good ground for the African countries to be able to channel their, their funds and their resources into um, handling this economic crisis and making sure that they are able to regenerate more revenue to be able to sustain and to provide solutions um, for this, um, considering the impact of this COVID. 
So I think it's actually a good one because as it is currently, um, looking at the economy across Africa, there is, uh, there is, there is actually a disruption in the flow of revenue and revenue is actually very, very low in most African countries now. So they considering how they are capable or their, the ability to pay this, um, this, this debt is actually, it's actually even doubtful because looking at the state of the economy that is being faced across Africa, I, it's actually cast doubt on their repayment um, capability. So this, we only allow the government to just look into how they can channel these funds in making sure that the country is, um, is tackling all the, the issues that has brought about by this COVID-19. So I think it's actually a good and an impressive development from China you know, and uh, we hope that the country actually in these countries that are being forgiven of their debt repayment this year actually look into um, creating um, um, good grounds where their um, where their citizens can thrive on and so and to be able to sustain the effect of this COVID nineteen. All right, so it's actually good for for the for governments and even the individuals to also look critically at um, what opportunity is on ground, you know, currently now, what opportunity is on ground? What can I key into to be able to uh, guide myself? Because I, I foresee that this post effect of this COVID-19 is going to be huge. So if we're looking at how we can also set aside measures for the country as a whole, then we need resources. So as, as it is now, is a good opportunity that okay the part of repaying loan is actually cut off so now what and what do we need to do to be able to see guide the effect of this COVID-19 on the citizens so governments have to look into opportunities and uh, various areas which you need to like channel these resources into to make sure that the citizens don't suffer so much for the impact that is anticipated for this COVID-19 post effect. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dosu. But you know, somehow I suspect China, anything they do, I, I always suspect like there's going to be, you know, like when they give you one, they'll bring their hand to take two. So do you think China might turn around one day and use this this gesture against African countries? Because I don't know. Do you think they can turn around and use this maybe to have some investments? Um advantage or you know to gain some advantage from the um, african governments but i don't just think it's going to compel them to do that but if opportunity comes it's just like they uh, every other person feels that if you actually even render a helping hand to someone then it is very it is ideal that the person also reciprocate all right so it's not going to look like it's been forced to do that but um, these countries we see that men, if this country was that um, thoughtful enough to lay off this debt, then I think we need to also um, key into the economy by doing more of investment. And so it's going to be um, like a, a personal decision, considering their good gesture to you as well. So I, I think it's just a way of selling themselves to us. Africans, so that when the need arises, that we also um, key into uh, into their own um, opportunities that they render, then we will ha we'll gladly do it without any any struggle or any reluctant, being reluctant or uh, yes, exactly without without hesitating, we will do that because it's just like returning a good gesture that has already been offered to us before. So it's not going to be like. They are going to compare you to do that but it is just okay. normal that when someone is being good and supportive then you also return that so okay. that's it yeah. mm -hmm. there's a question on the screen about digital currency uh they would like for you to touch on digital currency about investing in digital currency and someone says please ask her about digital currency which is different from digital banks 
so i think this person is making reference to like bitcoins you know all of those digital currencies that uh, people always market like me several people have come to me buy bitcoin invest in this one this one uh, i honestly i don't understand how those you know coins or those digital currencies work so um if you can give us a little insight about it Okay, um, it's just quite an investment. It's also an investment like a uh, uh, cryptocurrency, they call it. So one of it is Bitcoin. It's also, it's just basically an investment, but it's done digitally. Uh, and, and like it is, I would say that the risk is very high. The risk is very, very high, you know. So it's, it's just basically also an investment. So if you want to go into it, then you have to be aware of the event of the risk that is also involved. And I tell you that digital currency, it, it, has, it has a very high risk, but then the return is also high. So if you, if you are a risk adverse person, as someone that can take risk, then it is good you can key into it. All right, you can key into it. And then because a lot of people are, are actually even um, getting um, very good returns on that. And currently now, I see that most people are even looking towards it because it's experiencing it, right? Especially the Bitcoin. So, but one thing I always say is that it is highly risk. It's a risk. It's highly, it has a very high risk. So, but then if you can take that, if you can take that step, then good. The return is definitely going to be high. And you know, the thing is, um, the control is limited because it's more like it is not being controlled by a particular country or all of that. So everything is just done digitally and all that. So that is why there's high risk in it, but it's quite profitable. So if you are someone that can take a risk, then you can also just take advantage of it and it's, it's going to okay. profit you. Okay. So I'm sure you've heard Eunice and the other people who asked the question, Digital currencies or cryptocurrencies are high risk investments, but the returns are also high. So it's sort of like 50 50. If you invest and you are lucky enough to get through with your investment and you get the returns, you'll be smiling. But if you are not lucky enough, like I did, so um, someone tried, oh my goodness, someone tried to convince me to invest in one of these digital currencies, these cryptocurrencies once. I did that. And that was easy. Um, the billion coin one of them i invested in the whole thing just went into voicemail i never got any feedback i, I couldn't even log into the website again <laughs> I, I tried but the good thing is that the amount i invested in buying those bit and those coins were not much it wasn't much so it was a risk i could handle just like stephanie said before she went up it should it's a risk if it's a risk that you can handle the, the amount you put in should be such that even when anything anything goes wrong you are able to handle the risk and you know um bounce back on your feet financially if you understand what i mean so someone asked about um the agricultural side i think she had spoke and um, she had spoken on that earlier she talked about investing in the agricultural sector in nigeria for instance the people when um, there are companies who have shares in um, poultry farming, fish farming, um, rice farming on large scale. So they, they put those shares out there for people to buy. And the good thing is that with those shares, you don't have to be physically present. They employ people, farmers who work on the farms. At the end of the day, they sell these. And she mentioned earlier how Nigeria had closed the um, borders and banned the importation of certain um, um, food items such as rice um i think poultry and products and all of that just so that um, look um, farmers can be encouraged to farm locally and as a result of that border closure a lot of people a lot of these agri tech companies came up to encourage people to invest in i am very sure i saw quite a few of them online so people have taken advantage of it and what she said is that because that sector is not highly regulated as of now in order for you to be sure where you are investing, it's important for you to check for details on the Nigeria Security, um, ex the, the, sorry, the Nigeria Stock Exchange website, which I dropped the link in the chat room earlier. You go to the Nigeria Stock Exchange, you see all of the information on the companies in Nigeria, uh, because companies in Nigeria put their investment opportunities on the Nigeria Stock Exchange website. So you go there, that is where you can verify and be sure 
where you can invest in that you know your investment is going to be safe your investment is going to be secure she also mentioned the securities and exchange commission of nigeria you also need to go up on that website to check because those are the government um, bodies that regulate the business investment um, environment in nigeria just so you know that wherever you are putting your money your money is safe okay she has gone off so unfortunate um she has an engagement to um she had an engagement to go to by seven o'clock so it's five minutes past seven um unfortunately she has gone off if you need for her to talk more on the investment opportunities in nigeria um i would like for you to let me know so that we can probably bring her up another day to talk more i wanted to invest in agriculture but was told i need a nigerian bank account i would do more research and i will invest when i get to africa exactly so she had mentioned it unis that for those who um For those who are not Nigerians but want to open a um, bank account in Nigeria, it's it's it will take you um, working with a Nigerian to help you operate the account. Uh, I think what that means is the Nigerian is going to be the one who the, the, the bank account to be opened in that Nigerian's name. So if you are going to go that route, then it you ha it has to be someone you trust. It has to be someone you trust completely, hundred percent, because. The bank account is going to be in that person's name, but then the the money in the bank will belong to you. So, how much do you trust that person to be accountable to you with your money? Okay, but if you are a Nigerian living abroad, it's easy. You can open your bank account in Nigeria even without you being present because you're in Nigeria. You just put all of the documents required together and then send them down. Um, someone would help you open the um, bank account. So that's much. I think Stephanie is trying to come back up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So that's Stephanie coming back up. Yeah, Sorry. So welcome back. Sorry, guys. Thank you very much. Sorry. Apologies. I had a, a disruption in my in my uh, network here, and then sorry for the breaking transmission. All right. So someone someone asked a question about the agricultural sector, the investment opportunities, and I just um try to shed light on that based on what you had said earlier about the agri-tech um companies that are springing up, you know, from the time that Nigeria banned importation of certain food items and closed borders up until now. But you put a caveat that it's important to check with the Nigerian Stock Exchange to be sure that those agri techs are regulated and the you know their risks are quite minimal. I hope I, I said the right thing. Yes, they have to confirm from the Security and Exchange Commission. Yes. After right. obtaining information from the Nigerian Stock Exchange, um, before you finalize your your registration as to subscribe to those investments, you need to get the confirmation of the Nigeria and uh, the Security and Exchange Commission to go ahead with such investment just to guide against every risk that may arise okay do you um, have any running out of time okay um i think questions can also be dropped on the on the comment section where i will attend to if possible okay all right so um you've heard as you said you can drop questions in the comments that's when the video is uploaded uh, you can still drop questions in the comment section i told you she watches all my videos she reads comments so she's going to read the comments and she will answer your comments one-on-one -on -one. you see how kind she's my sister so she'll go to that extent just for me so thank yeah. you like i said she's a chartered accountant accountant so Anything she's telling you on this show is a valid information that you can check anywhere. And it's still, that's why I was mad with the person that was dropping trolls in the, that troll that was dropping comments earlier. That was why I was upset with the person, but I'm glad we've handled that situation. So it's Stephanie, allowed, it's allowed. allowed. The person can contact, contact me personally. <laughs> the person can drop his concerns and I'll address that as well. Those the who someone is asking a question. 
that do you need to have CFO to get loans from Nigerian banks? What is CFO? CFO. Can you put that in full? Because CFO means a lot. I can say chief security and chief financial officer is also called CFO. Yes. Yeah, so Kai Kai twenty eight. Please, can you clarify what you mean by um CFO? It's an acronym before, that means different. She go, first she can answer you. Yes, those who you were saying something. No, I said CFO is an acronym that means I have different um um meaning so i can say chief a chief financial officer is also a cfo because i'm running with i need to catch up with something by seven so i would rather attend to questions from the comment okay. section okay. at my own convenience here yeah. all right so that's it fam thank you so much stephanie for coming i appreciate you thank you for thank your you. um someone is saying cfo of land rights is this a certificate of occupancy that, be that means it's C of O. C of C of o. o. It doesn't mean C of O because it's it's if not I'm called CFO. Right, there's C of O, certificate of occupancy. And so that's why I need the person to clarify on that. You say ownership of I'm running, land. Ownership of land. That is um certificate of occupancy. No, you don't need that. You don't need that to obtain loan from Nigeria, except you are using you are using your land as a collateral. That way, then it will require you to submit uh, a copy of your CFO and your CFO. That's what they call it. So, and that that just shows is a proof that the land you are you are using as a collateral to your loan is actually yours. So, except you are using that um, as your collateral, then it will require you to also drop that um, that document as well. Okay. All right. So, Kai twenty eight. I'm sure she has answered you. Um, thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, better go to your events, what they want to go and catch up with, so you don't run late. You're already running late by 11 minutes. So thank you I so much for coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Betty right. Grace. I'm right. honored. And thank you, All everyone, right. for listening. Thank you. I will have right. your, um, your comments and your questions answered in the comment section. All thank right. you. I have to run now. Thank you for having me on the show. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So that very much, and uh, that's it from Stephanie. Um, thank you so much, Stephanie, for coming and for those answers. So Kai, you heard her. She said you don't need that to obtain a bank loan. I know that certain banks in Nigeria are actually begging people to take loans now. So they've made it so easy. GT Bank, for instance, just ask you to um dial i think 737 and you answer certain questions ussd and the loan they credit your account you know so you don't even need any um certificate of occupancy i don't know of all banks but i can say that for gt bank so banks basically are now willing to give out loans to people you know take 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 without demanding for um, all of those documentations really so that excuse me that's pretty much it if you still have questions, like she said, you can drop the questions in the in the comment sections and she will answer you. I'm trying to get um I have someone in the chat room. Fire Lawan, yeah. welcome to the show. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So how can are you? Hear me with? Well, one is my brother from Ghana. He's also a YouTuber. So welcome <laughs> to the show. Yeah, yeah. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you very much. So um, first of all, let me say a good evening to anyone here watching me live from Ghana, Accra, Ghana. Yeah. And uh, first, I will say the lady that came is a whole book knowledge. Like, she really knows much, and she has really uh, enhanced the minds of others. Exactly. You get me? So, uh, with the education she's really given us, it's, it's very, very, very important that I believe that anyone that comes on your channel here is really learning something great, because um, things like this will not be taught to you in school. And 
you never know because i believe there are people who have degrees in phds and other stuff but they have no knowledge until someone you know explain certain things to you then you really know that oh this is how it goes so i i really appreciate her, her work and for what she really because me myself i had no idea for what she was saying until i kept quiet listening and i got to know that yes things are uh, 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 uh quite better now i i can hear you i that you can you hear me i can't i can't hear you Hello, Vetu. Yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry, a call came in. I'm sorry. I, oh, okay, no problem. Okay. So okay. now, okay. yeah. Forgot. I mean, you so good the channel. Yeah. So sorry about that, Philo. When you were talking. So a, a, yeah. anyone in the chat room, sorry that wants to come up on the show. Um, let me know. Indicate. Let me drop the link. I trust that you are not going to abuse the link like you always do. You just. You know just click on it and come up on the show stephanie has given all of the professional insights that we need so if you um, we can spend the rest of the time now just having um conversations about maybe some things you've heard about investments and all because like i said she's going to read the comments eventually and she might shed you know insights on the other ones or questions so if you want to come up on the show I, like i said i've dropped the link and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share. Um, click the like and all of that. I'm also dropping my PayPal. I want to mispronounce this word. My PayPal. Um, yeah. For anyone who wants to um, make any contribution to support my work, my channel, you can go ahead and you know make your contributions there. Exactly. Well appreciated. I also want to say thank you to everyone who made donations to my PayPal um, in the last streams that I've had. Thank you all so much. I appreciate that. Um, you guys are all amazing. I love all of you so much. Thank you. So, Philoan, go ahead. Okay. So, like as I was saying, uh, she she really did a good job, which was the lady that came here. She really explained things to people to really understand and people to know how to go about certain issues like this in africa here because uh, most people come down to invest without asking questions they just move to the bank talk to any other person and then someone takes them through and most of the time they don't really get what they want and they they invest so huge into uh, uh anything they want to you know uh, partake in it and at the end of the day just like you said when you invested into the uh, billion uh, billion coin or yes like the person didn't really explain things to you into details you get it so if yeah. you're not someone that you're very um, um a thinkable person to follow up some certain things you might end up investing so huge amount into certain things like this and uh, at the end of the day it's it's it, as the lady said she said it comes with a high risk but you may not know that and you might think they have defrauded you that is also another uh, uh, uh disadvantage of it when you don't know something and then you just put yourself into it like that at the end of the day when it goes wrong you begin to wonder and then uh, you now get to know that it's a fraud or something like that so with that i think most people are now understanding some certain issues in africa here and how to invest where to invest into what to do what not to do and who to go and who to meet you get me so with that she spoke about um uh the agriculture side which comes with money which which comes with money 
that exactly means that um, most people invest into the agriculture side when it comes with um, money. I know someone in 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 in, in my country here who is investing into agriculture in a sense that um, it's like you have your farm, and then I come and ask you how much do you want to 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 keep up the farm booming? Do you get it? And then I just give you the money, whether you invest, whether whether you 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 gain profit or you don't gain profit. When, for me, my side, I don't care when I come. It's just that I am coming for what? My money. So one thing I would also say is that when when you have a business in the agricultural sector, maybe having a, a farm like a cocoa, millet, whatever it is, when someone is about to invest into your business, you should know when and when uh, it's, it's your harvest season. Because uh um you cannot you cannot tell me that you are investing into maize farm whilst it's in the hot season you are you are actually going to lose you get it so most of the farmers like we know in the villages when you go in 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 in, in most of the african countries like we know most of the farmers don't really have much knowledge about um such uh, investment because anyone can just walk up to any village and be like uncle i can see you are doing a cocoa farm Okay, how much do you need so that I can help you and then we, we improve the business? So even the investor should also understand farming. When an investor understands farming, definitely you're going to know that this is what I have to do, this is what I don't have to do. So most people, um, and be, be, be with uh, uh, according to um, with what I have seen and what I have experienced, most of the youths in, in, in here, um actually wants to invest in a situation whereby they take money in there and at the end of the day money comes back so it's like money for money do you get it but one thing i want to tell people is that when you invest into product growing something and harvesting exactly when 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 you you can just invest a little amount of money into such business or product and at the end of the day it's going to be a lifetime thing that you would always reap and reap and reap and reap out of it you get me so let's say uh, um, um you being in the united states or uk wherever it is budapest hungary and investing like let's say three thousand dollars into um uh, an investment banking is something i would i would advise most people that if they really have the love for investing into the agricultural side planting something because look even in ghana here as we are here right now common tomatoes that we use in ghana here are exported from burkina faso you get me just because it's not that it's not that we can't do it here but most people find it very difficult to think that ah um me investing something like this in 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 here how much am i gonna get gain out of it because a lot of people ain't doing it so such person things when i when i invest into a, 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 a business like this i'm actually gonna lose because if a business like this could stand then why the person asks himself or herself a question that why are they important from uh, uh, Burkina Faso, do you get it? So now people rather turn back to Burkina Faso to go and invest there because they think that is where the wholesale is coming from. You get it? But I'm so proud that one man, I don't know if he's a Ghanaian, but he, he, he came down here and he invested into cassava. I think around the central region, which he said they they, they they export these products to Nigeria, Cote d'Ivoire, and they even use the roughage for uh, fuel. Do you get it? And also for medicinal purposes. So I think uh, whoever is watching me now, now, listening to me, I think when you invest into agriculture more, I think the benefits comes double. Because right now that I'm here, if I go and invest in Europe, I don't think they will allow me to bring my money down here unless it's for a contract. 
Because even now in Europe or wherever it is, when you are withdrawing a thousand dollars, they ask you what are you going to use it for? Because they don't deal with physical cash. In Africa here, most of the time we deal with physical cash. It is only the big companies and the big, uh, let me say, the big industries that are dealing with online marketing. That is when, let's say, by, uh, 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 company A is actually going to send money to company B by what? Sending it through online without signing a check or, you know, going to the other company's uh, 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 front decks. You get me? So when we invest into the agriculture side now, you know, during this pandemic time, Africa had the biggest opportunity that I think they have really lost it. Yes, Africa had a big opportunity that I think they have really, really lost it. Look, come on, no smacks. They didn't have materials to produce it. Common nose mask. They didn't have the material to do what? To produce it. When it comes to canned foods that these people bottle in a, in a can and then they buy it to eat themselves, they didn't have the product to what? To produce it. During this pandemic, one man is entitled to pick one bread, one loaf of bread on a counter to buy. When you pick more than two, it, 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 it won't be sold to you. So my question is, all these things that they use for the bread making, the chocolate making, they are all coming from this land. So we could have, we could have produced, we could have produced or, or plant more if we were wise before. Our leaders could have helped us produce more and sold it to them. Because one thing I have also noticed with my research is that Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire, West Africa here, we are the two countries that produce highest quantity of what? Cocoa. You get it? And each and every year, I learned America spent two billion on chocolate. Two billion dollars just on chocolate. They don't come for the raw material here. Netherlands, Sweden, or wherever will come for the raw material here. They will process it. They will go for what? They will go for the powder or the paste and produce chocolate. And one thing I want to ask, uh, 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 Americans, Canadian, British, they eat chocolate more than any other person on this planet Earth. Even though we produce the cocoa, how many Africans do you see them liking sweet? Few but they mostly consume such product. So I think if we had we had that opportunity, we could have made a lot of what income from them. Do you get it? They, 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 they went on a lockdown and they were hungry. They were hungry. Some of them didn't have, even though they had the money, they, 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 they don't have some of the product to buy. Like things are out of stock. Everything was out of stock. But even in Africa here, when we went on lockdown, there was still food. There was still food. So I think uh, my brothers in, 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 in abroad, diaspora, should actually try and invest into the agriculture sector, which would really, really, really help and uh, gain more employees for, 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 for the youth. You can become most of the youths that we know uh, have no job. Most, I could say 80% of the youth, every, each and every year, we have uh, over a million of what? University students that are graduating. You get me? And even before you get a job, even before you get a job, we most, most university students will tell you that I, I stayed home for like two years before getting a job. I stayed home for like four years, some even more than that. Do you get it? So, and and with with the African uh, youth in, in, in Africa, I want to tell them that they shouldn't see agriculture to be the job of a poor person. No, never, never. They shouldn't see it that way. We have, we have, we have this. Um, there was this documentary I watched in one of the advanced countries, and look, 
They have about 100 acres of land which were used to plant tomatoes. And could you believe that this big land, it was only two people that were harvesting the whole acres just because they had what? The equipment. It was only two cars. One was harvesting and one was packing. It was only two cars. You wouldn't see anyone on the compound. We can do the same thing here. We can do the same thing here. Now, everything we eat in Africa here is inorganic. Everything comes in a can, which is actually killing us also. So I would, I would really love people to invest and come and build Africa. This, this, this is the only way we are going to survive. Let's build something. Let's produce something. So th this is what I have to say. Yeah. Thank you so much, Fela, for your very important contributions. I agree you. with you, especially on what you said towards the end of your contribution about people not seeing agriculture uh, as a prominent um, venture. Yeah. I just want to create that point because that, that has been the mindset of a lot of people, um, a lot of Africans, uh, I don't know, um, a lot of Nigerians. To be honest with you, growing up, I never loved going to the farm. I never loved farming. <laughs> <laughs> yes, even though my parents loved it. You know, my, my parents, uh, my mom was a nurse, my dad um, a teacher, but then they loved farming. And I hated it sure. so much. I hated it so much. I, I never liked going to the farm. I just saw it like it was too, too stressful, too dreary and, you know, draining. So I always had a mindset that it, 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 the work is just stressful and it's for poor people. <laughs> so, but you know, over the years, as I've grown bigger, I've seen that there's a lot of money in agriculture, but many people still see it like it's a low, it's, you know, it's a low prestige job. It's for people who yeah. don't have that. So, but farmers are making money. Those who have put their resources together and have decided to go into agriculture, be it crop production or livestock production, they are making reasonable amounts of money. And I've been considering even investing in in agriculture lately. Like Stephanie mentioned, um, agri techs that are coming up now. I'm looking at um, I'm looking at go, doing investment in that and. I've also learned so much from what she had just said before she went off of, um, you know, checking the Nigerian Stock Exchange um, website to see um, valid investment opportunities that companies have put there. I'm going to take time to do all of that. I will check that to, to identify those agri, um, agri tech companies that are genuine that I can invest in. I'm going to do that. And they promise good percentage returns on your investment at the end of sometimes nine months, sometimes six months, sometimes three months. Like Nigeria, we consume a lot of food, but the production is what is the challenge because many people are tending towards white collar jobs. They do not want to go into agriculture or people just want someone that will, you know, do the farm work for them. They, I, like they always say, I want my money to work for me. So they, they look for opportunities where they can put the money in people are working doing the job and at the end of the day they receive a lot in their banks you know bank alerts saying this is you know that's and that's the kind of thing yeah. so for me because yeah. obviously i do not have the land now to do all of the farm physical farm work i can put my money in terms of investment in those genuine valid agri startups or agri techs that i'm sure at the end of the day i'm going to have my own return on investments and I'll be smiling to the bank. So thank you for that contribution. My brother has yeah. been here, K28. Um, let's have your contribution. Welcome. Welcome. Can you hear me? In there, if you still want to make further contributions later. Um, before before K goes on, um, Fila One, like I said, is also a YouTuber. He has a channel. He what some of you have watched the video I made about um uh, speaking English, English accent that I made with Ghanaian. <laughs> the gambia and I. so he was one of yeah. the person who was a person representing ghana um very amazing they, they made me feel very much at home when i traveled to ghana he's my brother very awesome person so go subscribe to his channel and support him as well file i want drop the the link to your channel in the chat room so that people can click on it and go you know so um support your channel as well please when you go show him love watch his videos and you know 
how we do is we are talking about supporting one another, right? So yeah, okay, you have the the floor. Let me let, pronounce your name so I don't mispronounce it. <laughs> oh, this is just a nickname. My real name is Idowu. Idowu. Yes. Oh, yeah, Yoruba. Yes. Ah, uh, Ekabo, Ekabo. <laughs> Kogo Yoruba. Oh no. I'm I'm currently in um London, UK. But I have land in um Ogun State in Nigeria. So what I, some of the problems I've found, um I'm doing um agriculture. That's what I'm trying to go into. But I think if we had a collective or cooperative where the Africans on the ground within Africa come together and have like a trust, how can I say, like a cooperative where as you build a database of trustworthy people that we can invest. In. So even if the diaspora Africans in Europe, wherever they are, UK, America, wherever, because we're scattered everywhere. We could always invest in our own people that are trustworthy and proven. Now, take me for example, I have landed. I haven't done nothing with my land for almost three years now. I haven't done nothing, just been preparing, buying equipment, buying equipment, and getting the right people. But it's a slow process. Now, if you say we had grace, you was there, you knew that you had the you had the land, acquire the land whether it's you bought it or you're renting it. And then you now had people on your group, on your um, YouTube subscribers, that's for you, to fund exactly like what um, the lady before was saying, Agritech, but to fund, we worked as a cooperative, we could build and achieve things much more faster and more easier because we have a direct link in that country, whether it's Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, wherever it is in Africa. And for that purpose, I think that's part of the bridges that we need to build to make things more easier to achieve. Because the way I've always seen, um, the way I've always seen Africa is that the diasporas have the money, you have the, you have the um, materials, i.e. gold, for land, sink, whatever material it is, the natural resources. And this is where I think we need to kind of like steady start building up a database where we can now say, yeah, I can invest in this person, even if I don't know the person, but they're, uh, they're a validated person that has been checked out within that specific country so we can invest and grow together. And here is the funny thing is that I understand, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing this right, so maybe Grace would have to correct me. There was, um, it's like a cooperative, I think it's called SOSO or something similar to that, where everyone puts in every month and then one person gets paid. So this is something we already have literally done. Say that again. Asusu, Asusu. Right. In Ghana, they have the same thing. I know it's, it's, it's all across West Africa. We do this already. So why can't we collaborate? Whereas now me, instead of me having to come from the UK every two months, three months, I can entrust my funds to, let's say, Grace or to this gentleman there. And we know that we're building some collectively. And then maybe if we need equipment, I can go to, I don't know, Spain, China, wherever. If it's in Europe, I can source the equipment to mechanize our farm and to do it on the level of how they're doing here. Because right now, everything we, from my experience going to Nigeria, everything that we consume, most of it is imported. Everything is based on tomato that we eat in this Nigeria, pardon me, and Ghana, across that West Africa, I've noticed we consume a lot of tomato. But I'm pretty sure that most of our tomato is imported from Italy and, and Spain, places like that. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised. And I've asked 
And tomato farming is a very profitable business in Africa. And that's what I'm trying to do. Before you continue on that, you brought in the um, issue of tomatoes. So I come from Benue State. Um, Benue State is one of the 36 states in Nigeria. And it's known as the food basket of Nigeria. And that means um, Benue State, our uh, people are predominantly farmers. There's a lot of arable land in Benue State. The people are farmers, largely. But the problem in Benue State is the fact that there are there is no value addition to the um, products that are produced in Benue State. So tomato, for instance, in the harvests, a lot goes to waste, a lot, because farmers produce in large scale. But you know that the, the lifespan of tomatoes, for instance, is not you know, long. Yeah, so they get perish. Um, they get to perish very quickly soon after the harvest, and there's only so much the people can consume per time. So, in the harvest, the supply usually is more than the demand. So a lot goes to waste. So if one is thinking about investing in agriculture, if you don't want to go all the way to you know starting to invest in farming and all of that, you can think of the value addition. That's another aspect of the Nigerian economy that is hugely lacking value addition. So you mentioned something of, for instance, going to source for um, um, machines and all of that in other parts of Europe. So if sourcing for such machines would be to set up a factory, for instance, where you are going to pull uh, money and resources together, buy off these tomatoes, and it's not only tomato, we have tomatoes, we have pepper, you know, all of those perishable things during the harvest, we produce in large scale and then we process these um, tomatoes into tomato paste because a time comes when these tomatoes go out of supply and then people resort to the processed ones which sometimes are imported. We have a Rixo, com a Rixo company. A Rixo is an indigenous company that, you know, adds value to um, tomatoes in this regard. You know, they, they process tomato into the paste and sell in the country. But you know, Nigeria is a huge country, over 200 million people. So there's only so much one, one company can, you know, um, add value to and supply back to the people. So in the times of the, uh, the, the, the seasons when tomatoes, the fresh tomatoes are not in supply and the demand are not, you know, um, outweighs the supply. People resort to the processed tomatoes. That's where you can make, you know, good money. And it's all year round. Someone like me, for instance, I have the processed tomatoes in the kitchen now. For times when I'm not able to quickly go to the grocery store or to the market to shop for groceries, I can quickly just pick it up and cook what I want to cook and eat before I will eventually go out. So that's another aspect that people can consider investing in the value addition um, aspect of the nigerian agri um, sector you also we also have apart from the perishables you have grains grains are produced in large scale i say this because i grew up in benway rice um millet soybeans we have you know um, um granite what um some people call peanuts they are produced in large scale like i said yams cassava so there's opportunity to add value to all of these um products that i've called that i've mentioned here we should think also value addition you know I, and this I, company I agree employ nigerians these companies will employ nigerians as well for benue state for instance not just benue state i i i, I retract that the government is making efforts at improving agriculture but there's only much private the, the good thing is that private individuals have the opportunities if they have the resources to set up companies and to play in this agri space you know in terms of value addition and all of that so as a nigerian you are not in that you can set up your company you just have to go through the process of registration with the relevant government agencies that regulate that space. You set up your company, you go ahead to procure this. I'm telling you, I'm waiting for 
um this what you call it this pandemic and the travel res restrictions to be lifted i plan on going to Benue state which is my state to go do some videos there and just to showcase the vast investment opportunities that exist there for people who want to come and invest especially the agri you know sector because there's a lot you can do there yes yeah. yeah, so okay go on i just wanted to add that that's, quickly that's very true what you said because the people that are farming in my area they're from benway state so i was always wondering why is the, pe the people that come to farm from benway state that state always so it seems that's a very big tradition out there but also as you were saying my problem the reason why i haven't started farming in three years is because i looked at the whole the whole process that farming is not our problem it's like you said, storage, adding value. Those are our main problems. And from what my research over the last, let's say, four four years, we lose in, in tomato alone, we, lo we lose 75% of our tomato gets destroyed. Whether it's in storage, lack of storage, or in transport, we lose. So you're farming something that you're that you factored in that you're going to lose seventy five percent. You will never progress. There is no um, storage facilities for any of these farmers because most of the farmers in my area are are, are, are small crop holders, i.e., small small farms, and they're not really collaborating, working together. And if they did collaborate and had and built like a storage facility, like a call, like a warehouse. That is a, a cool storage facility. You can prolong the life to, to a point where then if we build a factory, you can now make it another produce out of it. And because I've, I've traveled back and forth to Italy, a lot, I've noticed most of our tomato that we consume canned is, is from Italy. They consume, I think Nigeria and Italy maybe are the two in the top three consumers of tomato in the world but yet we import at least 90 percent of what we consume and we lose to waste most of our produce and that's just not tomato that's everything across the board because there's no next step okay you can farm what is the next step can you store it can you sell it and then if you do sell it you're selling it from what I found out, from my dad used to, used to grow cashew, and my and his friend used to grow cashew. Once you take that cashew from the farm to the port, at that port, the ports were controlled by Indians. In this is in Lagos. When it comes to cashew purchasing, they control the price. Indian people, which then they're buying it by the sack, by a kilo. All they're doing is deshelling it. And now they're, they're um, presenting it in a clear bag. Cashew here costs maybe um, the equivalent of maybe three pounds or four pounds. Wow, that's expensive. For a small, I'm talking like maybe 250 grams or less of cashew. Considering that they bought a sack of maybe 100 kilos for virtually nothing from the farmer because they've, they're setting the price. So I was asking my dad, how is it possible that you, the farmers, grow it, but as soon as you take it to the pool, it's only Indian buyers. Why can't you cut them out and, and you manufacture it and you push it to Europe? You send it to Europe. You send it to the, to the grocery stores that dominate Europe where you have a, 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 a higher fee for your produce. But like with a lot of things I've noticed in Africa in general, we only deal with the low end. We don't deal with the middle of final product. And that's to our detriment. So what would, what would you say could be the solution where we could now say, okay, we are going to be the end use buyers because the food chain is a chain. We're just here at the beginning. But there's other links that we need to control to get added value. That's 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 what I believe. Yeah. So um, what you said is is true, and 
it's so unfortunate like i mentioned that's what farmers go through and that's because there's no organization it's very important to organize ourselves to form and uh, let's say cooperatives um for instance people who farm um, um cocoa for instance people who farm cashew nuts you know it's important for them to organize themselves and form themselves into maybe cooperatives where they collectively determine the prices on their products why the indians are able to you know um control the prices because the market is not organized so they feel like they can infiltrate the market and call the shots at any time being that they are the ones buying so if considering three of us on the panel now are all cashew farmers you have your own stock he has his stock i have my stock then we have a buyer if i call a price that is high he might be willing to lower on that price you might be willing to lower on that price so the indian already has options so it's easy for him to sideline me and go patronize you but if we, all, if we all speak with one voice and decide for one gram of cashew nuts that we bring to the market this is the price so regardless of who he goes to the price is the same that is how we start to take control back from the buyer you know we can then negotiate and demand better for our products but most of the time like i said especially the agri sector people because individuals go into the farms they use their resources you know they they produce all of this they just want to sell this off especially for the, the products that are highly perishable they want to just sell this off and make maybe not not much profit they just want to be able to recover the capital that they, they invested in producing that and then just a little profit is enough to go by but to answer your question like i started if we are going to demand better and take back control then we have to organize ourselves as african farmers yeah. that's very important and then of course i know that our governments try to regulate there's a nigeria export import um promotion corporation i think there's an agency of the government like that that regulates the imports and exports um, environment in nigeria so they, they try to you know determine prices and all of that but it it has to start from and they encourage farmers to form cooperatives as well farmers okay. are encouraged to form cooperatives that's very but important they have, they have cooperatives already but there's no action they have there's, you know, Africans, we love union. That's what I noticed. They love their group, their union, union, group, group, group. But there's no action and there's no togetherness. Let me give you a figure now that um, the gentleman in the middle, I don't know, I can't remember his name. Yeah, Philo One. Philo One, right. Okay, because you was talking about coca, right? Yeah. In Europe, this is 2017 stats. Yeah. Um, the, the European market is the largest consumer of chocolate confection exactly exactly the european i'm sorry if we just continue with the conversation i will back I, I want to get more water i'm sorry so i'll be okay. back just continue okay. the conversation all right right all so right. The, so the european market share is 49 percent they, they their share is 49 percent. that 49 yeah. percent equates to 44 billion euros 44 billion euros Wow. Now, North America came second with 21% of the market. Then I think Germany, Germany is the largest exporter of chocolate. Can you believe that? The largest exporter of chocolate, not cocoa, just chocolate, with a global wow. market share of 18%. So you've got to look at these figures. Neither of these three countries I've said is he I've, I've noticed i've noticed I've, I've noticed one thing in here mm -hmm. that germany being the highest of producing chocolate export mm -hmm. we produce the cocoa itself even the farmers in our country their sons and daughters have never tested chocolate i'm telling of you course. of course of course i know 
you see, when 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 I when I do research like this and and I get to know some certain things, I really get angry sometimes because I'm I, I'm like, this can happen. How can you cook the food and someone else is eating it? Uh, that's not possible. I learned one thing in in Turkey. In Turkey, um, the ambassadors, the ministers, and other people who are in the government who owns positions. There's one thing I noticed that almost each and every one of them has a background of once being a farmer. So if you want to be an ambassador and you are from Turkey, you need to have a farm a, a farming background. They they want they want if you the leader you can produce something for the citizens to 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 rely on to feed on then when you come to power what else would you want to do for the country you yes. hear me yeah so one one thing one one thing that uh, i think we we really need to learn always i keep saying to the youth in africa that farming it is never and ever for the poor no Maybe people might think that is the, that is the concept, um, uh, 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 the perception, but it is totally not true. Farming, it's never and ever. It's because I would say for now, um, most areas in in Africa here actually, like villages, those who are more into farming don't have um, uh, uh, the items or the tools to to actually farm for like a one acre land, two acres, three acres. So um, every day we are actually going to sink when it comes to what we will eat in Africa. But if we really had, uh, 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 if we really had um, uh, a support, we had the tools, we have land to, to you know, work on. I think uh, mm. we wouldn't go and ask for anyone to come and give us uh, uh, some, some things that we produce in here. No. Because I don't understand why we produce our own tomatoes here, but at the end of the day, it's something else. It's, it's, it? it's always been like that because there's a form, there's there's mechanisms that are used as form of control sure. to keep the rich, i.e., the rich countries wealthy and the poor countries in their same position. The same position. So, so now, if you look at all the countries I named to you, not one of them produce mm. cocoa. Yeah. And the largest consumer, actual food consumer, is is um, Switzerland, which they're famous for chocolate, chocolate making. Wow. They're the largest consumers in the world of of, of chocolate. And Grace, you may know this that um, before, maybe in the early seventies. Or late seventies, Nigeria was the biggest cocoa producer in the world at one stage, but because of yeah. oil, they abandoned all farming. They just because coke to them oil was easier and quick, much fast money, which yes. obviously, as we all know, is a curse to Nigeria. Yes, there was a time that um, agriculture was Nigeria's highest um, foreign exchange, and uh, I agree with you. And that was from cocoa, largely from cocoa. Then granodes, of course. You remember the granite pyramids of Kano? The Nigeria exported granodes, uh, cocoa, and um, oil, um, oil, palm oil. Those were Nigeria's highest um, foreign exchange earners until oil was discovered. Then everybody abandoned farming and started chasing after oil, which has now become the exclusive preserve for the you know rich and influential the politicians. And we all know how the oil prices are fluctuating now and the demand is you know dropping and also the government is now making frantic efforts to um, convince citizens to go back to farming so a lot of schemes a lot of programs have been initiated by the government just to lure people uh, like providing fertilizers pro and providing um, agricultural loans to farmers to enable them uh, you know, produce on larger scales for um, consumption in the country and, of course, for exports. But a lot still has to be done. So we have um, a new um, person on the guest on the panel with us, and um, Flo. Flo is always on the show to give her own excellent contribution. So welcome to today's show. 
and let's have your contribution. Hello, welcome. So while she's talking, Hi, the rest ID. of us can mute our microphones. Hi. I think there's a delay. Anyway, hi, ID and uh, Mr. Gown over there to say. <laughs> yeah. His name is Pila One. <laughs> I think the best thing that could have happened for Africa in general is actually COVID-19, to be honest with you. Yeah, because this is due to the simple fact that the reason why I say COVID-19 was very good, it did actually open the eyes of <laughs> it did open the eyes of our of our um politicians. They realized where they went wrong with everything that they've done with the country. Because I mean, shame on Nigeria, because I mean in the 1970s it was the the elephant of Africa. It even beat the dollar. And the uh, you know and the sterling on the stock market. So how everything went down to pot, only God knows, you know. And also one of the other best things I say about COVID nineteen is that it devalued the price of black gold oil. So now there will be no more corruption because that's not worth anything, even a single barrel. So I'm kind of really grateful at God's own actions, to be honest with you because people will have to find something else to do. And basically, people need to go back to where their ancestors started. All our ancestors, regardless of your class, race, creed, right at this moment, we, were, we all came from farming. We all did come from farming, okay? And that is the best thing, because I seriously believe that Africa is the breadbasket of the world. Seriously, it is. It's not just. It's not just about cassava. It's not just about tomatoes. It's not just about yam and plantain. It's not just about that. In Africa, you can grow everything. I was surprised to realize that in Africa, they could actually grow strawberries. I didn't know, you understand? Because to me, strawberries are, is a white man's concern, you know what I mean? But the, I think that the problem with farming in Africa was that farming is the godfather of agriculture anyway. It is, you know? It's those little people in the villages with their little spare lands, their old family heirlooms, who started to plan something and what they would do is that they were trained to think on a small scale. Farming in Africa used to be farm to table. So it's basically you plant the stuff, you harvest it, you carry it, you take it to the market, you sell as much as you can, the rest is for your family to eat, you know, and then you come back, you farm the other side of your one acre, then you put in the new crops for the new season, and that was the problem. So colonials actually came to deal with our farmers. The problem with our farmers is that they were just thinking of farming as survival. They didn't actually see its true value per se, to be fair. And also with the lack of education, I'm afraid to say that most of our farmers had at the time, even though they were the ones who encouraged today's doctors, lawyers, and whatever, because it is from illiterate parents that all these doctors and lawyers were born anyway. So <laughs> when it came to dealing with getting fair price for their crops, the problem with African farmers was that they were not aware of the fact that the West has a stock market that grades cocoa, that grades plantain, that grades gold. You see what I mean? So therefore, if you gave them a number that sounded reasonable enough to sustain them, to sustain their farm, to sustain their family, they were not thinking of, like Caucasians think of, you want to make 200% profit on your crop. If they made 10% profit 
on everything else. It was, it was sufficient for them. And that's the problem with it. A lot of um, colonials took advantage of that naivete to cheat them on the price of actual crops because there is a market price for cocoa. But only those of us in the diaspora or anybody else who's remotely educated can see it. You know, you buy any newspaper, the Times newspaper, for instance, you look through the back at the stock market, you will know the price of current crops that are popular and successful in the European market. So COVID-19 is actually a blessing to anybody who wants to um, invest in agriculture in Africa, simply due to the fact that Western people are actually going to depend on Africa for food. They are, because even England does not produce anything. If you look at lettuce in England, they get it from Romania. Toilet paper is not manufactured here. It's manufactured in Turkey. You know, English people don't manufacture anything. Everything else, medical supplies and everything else was coming from China at the time. And then um, COVID-19 just opened up the eyes of everybody to make you realize that you are actually very vulnerable in the way in which you deal with your country. Because, I mean, in England, when they told us to go on lockdown on the 18th of March, I mean, the first thing that disappeared from supermarkets throughout England, toilet paper. Then after that, you couldn't find milk. Then after that, I mean, you couldn't even find coffee. Then after that, you couldn't even find yeast for baking. And even till today, we don't have yeast to bake. You go into any supermarket, you can't find it. So Africans and African agri agriculturalists or whatever they want to call themselves have an opportunity, they have a big opportunity actually to, you know, to, to take advantage of the situation. Just like ID said when he was talking about um, a co-op, you know, yeah, you could do co-ops with certain um, farmers. ID, for instance, has a land in Ogun State. So if there's anybody in, from the diaspora that comes in or in Nigeria that has money to do farming on his land, he can actually lease it out. You see what I mean? And then you get on with your project. So at the end of the day, too, ID doesn't lose because he's agreed the price of leasing his own farm while somebody else is farming the soil for him and also making their profit. You know, it's a, it's a good way to go. A lot of people in the village actually do do that, you know, when they can't farm a land. Because, I mean, why leave um, a valuable resource, sorry, to go to waste? when you can actually use it for something. Because imagine that ID, for instance, is not ready to go home in the next two years. Will you leave the land sleeping there whilst this is actually the time to beat the iron whilst it's hot? You know, so ID, if you can't do it, find somebody else who can. If you can organize co-ops, I mean, there is catfish farming because right now, uh, with all the tensions going on with China, we used to get, we used to import our catfish from China, our smoked fish from China, and uh, stock fish, we used to get it from Holland, which is ridiculous because the same fish that they use to do the process, we can actually do it back home ourselves. And these are things that are our staples. They're not foreign to us, they're our staples. Now, the problem okay. with I interrupt you Farming for a in Africa, if I may say so, is the fact that, okay, as not everybody has money to build a manufacturing plant. Not everybody has that money. So if somebody wants to go into planting tomatoes, strawberries, and God knows what not, there are many things you can do with it. But you need to sort out the canning process for it. Pardon? I thought you were saying something, ID. <laughs> I was gonna. I was just gonna no. say that. The, no, because I mean, the, quite frankly, is the canning process. You know, I think that we also need to educate African farmers on how to do preserves and how to do jams. 
you know, because if you look at many, many other different economies, that's what they do. Yeah. Glass jars, boil the damn thing, put vinegar in it. No, what, I, what I was going to say was, what I was going to say was even the fish that they're selling back to us was fished off our waters of West Africa. Most of the fish the Chinese are selling are from West Africa, which is a fact. What, what um, Flo said, I agree with her. There's a lot that can be done here. Um, like I said, Nigeria had shut her borders to importation of several, uh, like rice, um, um, chicken, um, poultry. Yeah, chicken is under poultry. Um, seafoods and all of that. And a lot of people are now going into, I muted as she's talking. Let me unmute her. So a lot of people are now going into even fish farming, and there's a lot of um, demand for fish. For instance, um, the catfish that you mentioned. Personally, I don't like. I I don't like eating. <laughs> so I tend more towards fish, you know. So I do more um more of like catfish, you know, and. The supply is not much, so people now do private farms, you know, fish farms where they, they farm these things in large scale. And the good thing is that they don't take so much time before they mature and are ready, you know, to be sold in the market. So it's an um, another area that one can invest in. Um, she, Eunice, I, I pinned the comment she made on the screen. A lot of people don't know that you can actually rent farmlands in, in Africa, or at least I can say that for Nigeria, you can rent farmlands and farm on it. You, you lease it for a period of time, farm on it, and then uh, you know give it back to the owner. If you don't want to buy or don't have uh, you know money to buy, you can lease it. And she, she mentioned you, know, you leasing it out or giving it out to farmers who can use while you are there um there was a land uh, my father bought so i'm not there i'm not using it my sister is not using it my auntie is the one who farms on the land as we speak now so uh, just so that the land doesn't lie there follow and waste you can give it out to people who are willing to farm and then and there's this thing that people do you know just they come together though that's um locally people um, organize themselves into groups and come together to sort of assist each other on the farm to do especially for manual work they assist so they, they come together go work on this person's farm then agree that the next person is going to be you so everybody goes to you know support you work on your own farm but with mechanization now a lot of that is changing for people who can afford tractors the government also has programs where you can rent tractors and all of that to work on your farm and you know do all of especially in terms of crop production on a larger scale like rice and all rice is another food that nigerians consume on a very large scale in this country so there's ever increasing demand for rice in the country so if you are in that space you're also going to you know have a market always for your produce so and um floor you have the floor you were saying sorry for interrupting you i don't know if she, if she can hear me if, if she can't then um eunice also mentioned something i saw something on the screen about the price of of water increasing and i just found it because here in in nigeria for instance we don't really pay no for no because no, i mean that no I, I don't mind it's a discussion you know but um there are many things we can do with crops most people don't even know i can hear you You can go on, go on, go on. The price, the, uh, the things you can do with cassava, you know, cassava, you can do flour, you can bake with cassava flour. You can actually cook the leaves. Yeah, you, you can actually cook the leaves. 
you can make medicine out of the leaves. You can actually make alcohol out of cassava itself, you know, by fermenting it. Um, there are many things you can do with cassava. Yellow cassava is healthier for you than white cassava. Some people don't know that, you know. If you want to plant, I don't know, because I mean, I know that there is a honey farm in Nigeria and this person actually collaborated with a Western company to come and learn how to um, harvest the bees and to keep them in the hives, you know, um, because that's what the guy wanted to do. So now you can even get honey if you don't like the sort of, uh, you know, soil farming, you can actually cultivate bees to make honey. Because, I mean, Africa has the soil, has the weather, has the capacity to grow every single crop that every single country in the globe actually eats in its land. You know, if you picked up America and threw it inside Africa, America only feeds half of Africa. So I just think that people who are blessed enough to have the money or your little shishi on the side and you can invest in a co-op, you should do that. But where we need the government help is with the exportation of what we produce because we are, it is the new gold. Agriculture is actually the new gold. There are many students now, even in Nigeria now, who have studied agriculture and part of their youth service training is to go into villages to teach farmers some of the new techniques. So yeah, you could reduce unemployment with that too, by hiring those type of um, you know, students and also some of the local boys who've got nothing else to do. You understand? It's not everybody who's born to go to university. And if you look at the number of millionaires, true millionaires out there, they've never seen the inside of a university to save their lives. You know what I mean? So education is not necessarily everything. Sometimes apprenticeships is, is actually more rewarding than, you know, going to sit in a classroom for four, five, six years of your life, unless you want to be a doctor or a vet, you know what I mean, to actually make a living. So, I mean, there are other things you can do with banana, because right now plantain is, uh, they say that plantain is such a funny plant that it's slowly running out in the world. So anybody who can farm plantain and bananas so that the world doesn't run out of it is actually quite quite good and that's a good that's a good investment with strawberries africa needs to start learning how to do jam i make my own jams at home because i'm very particular about it our oranges are much better than um white people's oranges to be very honest and you can make conserves uh, uh, white people love conserves that's their cup of tea, you know? Even with ginger, you can learn from the Chinese. Chinese have a, um, a ginger preserve. And because everybody is now going into all this organic thing, health is everything, um, anybody in the diaspora who really wants to help improve the economy of their country and also make money should actually do that. You should consider not just cassava, not just plantain, not just yam, not just fish, not just poultry, because, I mean, even now tilapia, you can actually um, grow that in a tank. And Africans consume a whole load of tilapia, even here in the diaspora. We do eat that. Catfish is not my, my favorite uh, fish, to be very honest, because there's for me, there's spiritual connotation with that fish and I don't like it, but to each their own, you know? To teach people how to smoke the fish, and that's what I, um, these little farmers need to go into. They don't have a business mind. They're a bit like, um, you know, creatives, fashion designers. Fashion designers have a dream of designing the clothing, but the problem with fashion designers is when it comes to discussing profit margins, you know, and stuff like that, that's where they lose out. And African farmers are a bit like that. You know, so somebody should teach them to have a business mind when they're selling the crop. So the last thing I'm going to say before I cede the floor to somebody is that, you know, President Kagame, we have notoriously been cheated 
with the price of our minerals, i.e. diamonds, emeralds, rubies, and stuff like that. We've notoriously been cheated. But that was partially our fault because we didn't really understand the true value of what God created on our soil. You understand? We didn't understand it. But now Kagame, when he came into power, what he did was to, to make Botswana what it is now, uh, Rwanda what it is now, sorry, he actually put up the price of diamonds when he was selling it to the Europeans. He put up the price. And that's what um, every African farmer, anybody who goes into agriculture now needs to do. You need to put up the price of your crops. And also to augment the price of your crops, you need to have a follow-on process. I.e., if you sell strawberries yeah, to market, to table or whatever, learn also how to do the jam, the, the process for preserving them, okay? Also from strawberries, what people don't know is that you can actually make certain cocktails from strawberries. So you have to look into that as well because, hey, you go into a white bar here in the UK, they will offer you some very strange drinks. And when you look at the label at the back, you'll find out that it's from common fruits that we normally eat just like that, that they make that sort of profit. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I, I, I just think that education needs to come into it. And anybody who's coming back to the diaspora, if you want to set up online business classes to teach farmers, it would be a good thing as well. If, if uh, the university students also want to make some money and run some classes and go into villages, I think it would be a good thing as well for anybody. And some of you see, it's it's important that we share minds and you know share ideas, rub minds and share ideas rather. And there's a question on the screen here. That was, that was, does one know how much a working plant will cost? We can start saving now. So, okay, uh, I don't know if you can answer this question, ID. Well, from my research, depending what you want to do, um, obviously you've got to start small, unless you have a large collective that has a lot of funds. But a lot of machinery that I've seen that you can that will enable you to do, let's say for me, I was thinking of um, doing. Um, Chips. You know, there's what there's one time I was in Nigeria and um KFC. Um I I went there to buy a, a meal, but they, they had a sign that we don't have no chips. So I started like asking questions, how can you run a KFC or a fast food shop and one of your main ingredients you don't have to sell? And they said there was a shortage of chips. So it had me thinking, okay. I have farmland. If I grow tomatoes, could I process it to make chips, fries, so I could sell to, well, KFC or whichever chain? And when I looked into it, maybe around $10,000, you could get a, a small processing plant for fries that would peel the potatoes, cut them into fries, freeze them and bag them between 10 to 15,000, which when you look at the, the, the profit margin you can make on that 10 to 15,000, it's actually huge. When you consider that a lot of the, a lot of the KFC, um, Domino's pizza, a lot of their um, ingredients is imported. Their cheese is all imported. Um, not most of the produce they use is coming a lot of it is coming from south Africa, which i found strange that they couldn't source the produce within nigeria and i'll see that as a common problem that's why you don't have let's say mcdonald's if you're aware mcdonald's is everywhere in europe everywhere else in the world but in africa there's no in nigeria there's no mcdonald's because there is no infrastructure 
that they can get to the quality of what they want to their satisfactory level for them to even open a McDonald's in Nigeria. First problem we have is light. That, that is just the first problem. No electricity, no stable electricity. It stops more or less everything in its tracks. If you're going to run a factory off generator, that is going to cost you so much money that you are at a disadvantage. So then you have to look at other options, solar. And because we have sunlight, I would, I would personally opt for something like solar, solar power to try and um, power my factory. If, um, when, when I start to build my factory, that's, that's my option. I'm not relying on NEPA. I don't even want to know about NEPA. But things like this where there's produce. When I was there, I spoke to, um, um, what was it? Was it Mr. Biggs? Or there's a chicken shop that is similar to KFC. I'm not sure if you can help me, Grace. That is similar to KFC. I can't remember. It's a chain. Re Chicken Republic. That's it. Chicken Republic. Yes, Chicken Republic. Yes, Chicken Republic. Right. When I spoke to someone, they they asked. They even asked me, who I'm. I'm a nobody. They asked me if I could supply tomato for Chicken Republic. So there's there's things that you can achieve within Africa that you could never achieve within Europe or uh, Americas. You can't go to a, a major distributor and supply them. They will never listen to you because there's already someone there do. But within Africa, you can do these things where Chicken Republic, um, the other one was a South African shopping center. I can't remember what the name of that one is. That, Shop um, Shop 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 yes. The person I spoke to in Lagos, he says his two clients are Chicken Republic and ShopRite. And what they needed was tomato on a consistent basis. Yes, to their because stand. a lot of people go there on a daily basis shopping. It's they, they have chains, you know, it's a chain. Um, yes. Business. So they have different outlets all across Nigeria. People go there every day, constantly, twenty-four. No, not twenty-four hours. They close anyway, but it's like almost twelve hours. Yes, and the other thing I done when I did some research, this Chicken Republic, that guy, he gathered money in Nigeria. He worked for a chicken shop in Nigeria, a chain, a small chain that I don't think was, it was successful maybe in the late 90s to early 2000s, has a procure for chicken or stuff, something like that. And then he went, he got money from his family and friends and started that chain, Chicken Republic, which now is about 80 stores. He has maybe 80 stores across Africa. He has some in Ghana, but mainly in Nigeria and a few in Ghana. That guy... He studied in the UK, not nothing to do with what he's doing. He studied in the UK, got a degree in the UK. He went there. He's now worth 400 million at that time. That was maybe about four years ago that I saw. So within about six years, he built up a company, six to seven, no, eight years, he built up a company that is now worth $400 million at that time. That was about four or five years ago. You cannot... It's going to be very difficult for you as a diasporian to do that within the Americas or within Europe because those markets are already closed to us. They're already overpopulated. But within Africa, no one is dominant. No one is, controls nothing. And it is a good thing and a bad thing because the infrastructure is so bad, it stopped all of these Western companies coming in there and being dominant over us. Because if our structure was good, you would have pizza everywhere. You have dominoes everywhere. Like dominoes has exploded now in Nigeria. When I was there, there wasn't a dominoes. Now there's about, they're trying to open 100 in Nigeria. That's what I was told. That's their projection they're trying to do. And also McDonald's. There's no such thing as McDonald's in Nigeria. But that's just because of infrastructure. So that infrastructure is what's saving us from being overrun. But at the same time, we... Us Africans have to now implement inf infrastructure and put our own food chains to control our own markets. Otherwise, we're just going to be consumers again within our own country. So this this um, food chains that you're mentioning, they identify the markets, the needs in in Africa. 
then they come here take advantage of those existing needs and then set up their own businesses and our people see one thing with africans we like to we, we like to project ourselves or portray ourselves as belonging you know there's there's an increase rise in the middle class so a lot of you know there's a, a a large percentage of nigerians for instance who belong to the middle class so people want to enjoy life people want, there are a lot of people who want to patronize all of these um, businesses that you're mentioning so they get a lot of patronage sometimes they seem even overwhelmed by the number of people who are patronizing them so opportunities are bound like we've been saying basically and it's an opportunity for us because these um, foreigners they identify these opportunities and come to take advantage but we who are the rightful people who should be um, you know harnessing these opportunities to make money for ourselves why also adding value in that our businesses will be employing um, our people we seem hesitant so conversations like this are just to you know inspire us to think about returning back to nigeria returning back to ghana returning back to kenya tanzania um rwanda just name it anywhere to come set up businesses you know opportunities like you said here everybody you are open nobody th there are no regulations or laws that are, are aimed at limiting you you know or preventing you from growing your business to whatever um, extent you want to all you need to do is simply just you know pay your taxes as required you know do business within the the laws of the country what's acceptable or not acceptable and you are good to go with everybody the market is there huge market in africa and the the, the west knows that so they you know they have businesses coming into africa in large numbers to take up those um market needs and fill those gaps so even in the aspect of manufacturing somebody asked the question of machines okay i think you answered that question earlier so the areas of food agriculture even uh, tech in the tech um, space too there are opportunities you know so that's basically i don't know if i do you do you want to add anything do you have anything you want to add anyone in the chat room who wants to um come up before we go i'm going to drop the link you can come up on the show and also make your contribution if you want to so uh, someone mentioned something earlier i wanted to talk about and i forgot um i think it was Eunice who said the price of water increased and to me that was so uh, new it's not something that happens here because in nigeria for instance we don't really pay for water we just have water and then if you have the opportunity to even if you have the, the resources and you're able to sink your own borehole like in, in my house here we have our own borehole so we pump water and use it as we want we are not paying for water bills so if you are going to do business in nigeria for instance or um, in, i don't know if, okay my Ghanaian brother is here he's going to give us um insights about the water situation in ghana but for nigeria um you can provide your water for yourself and nobody's going to come demand for water bill from you if you can sink your own borehole you sink it you have constant water supply you are doing your business even in the, in the aspect of um agriculture you can utilize that for irrigation for when you do for when you do um, when you want to do dry farming um dry season farming sorry when the rains are no longer here and you want to farm because around that period people make place demand for certain um, products that are only available during the rainy season like have and the tomatoes that we're talking about they, they grow mostly only during the rainy season so for dry season you can utilize irrigation and do dry season farming where you can plant your own um, tomatoes and probably sell and all then we also have uh, someone mentioned fruits we need fruits in nigeria like people everybody is tending towards you know feed farm that's what we call them basically feed farm healthy living um, i i eat fruits i eat this 
there was a day I went to the market because I liked to buy from our local people. Most of the times I, I buy from the local vendors just to encourage them, you know. So I went, I wanted to buy pineapple, which happens to be my favorite fruit. But, you know, there was no pineapple. And when I asked, they said, um, well, they, they didn't, when, where they normally go to buy, they didn't see pineapples today. So pineapples are not here. I'm like, why? These are things that we should have. Pineapples grow here. So we should grow pineapples like all the time. There shouldn't be a time where we cannot have pineapples supplied in the market for us. But again, these are opportunities that, you know, abound for us to um, take advantage of. So file one for Ghana, what is the water situation like when you consider it in okay. the uh, business and in uh, in, in Ghana here, actually, where the water situation here, let me say, in other rural areas and in our homes, um, if maybe uh, you, you feel to, you know, get a borehole from your house, I think uh, the government wouldn't come and ask you any question that why are you getting it. You just have to uh, consult those who can do it for you and then you pay them and then they get it for you. And I think I even have one at my backyard where uh, water comes in all the time. Yeah, water comes in. And even sometimes the water gets full up and then it's, uh, uh, it's I don't know how to put it, like it becomes too much and it gets out of it. Like yeah. overflow? Yeah, overflow, overflow, yeah. And if, 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 you you want to have a farm depending on where the land is you have to know the texture of the land itself whether uh, there is a lot of water on the land if there is a lot of water on the land i would advise you to you know get uh, a, um, a, a borehole on that particular land and then mount it in such a way that everyone can know that there is a borehole there just for someone not to fall in it or something and then you are good to go. So when you need to just water your crops or whatever it is, you don't need to go and buy water. You don't need to go and buy water because actually in Ghana here, um, uh, in uh, there is a place called Teshinungwa where they neutralize uh, the seawater. They extract the salt from it. So sometimes when we get to know that uh, water is being shot in the country, the water you actually use uh, uh, can't actually uh, help you do anything soapy. When when you when it comes in contact with soap, uh, the foamy uh, reduces. Uh, that makes you know that yeah, 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 exactly. So um, with water problem, um, in if if let me say, in in other people's houses. Um, it, there are days where it comes and it goes off, you know, because I learned we sometimes supply other countries like neighboring countries like Togo or something like that. We sometimes supply them water. So uh, most of the days that it comes on is, uh, I think, Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays and Saturdays. These are the days where water flows, uh, you know, frequently. But if you have a polytank, you will never notice it. You would always think you have water 24-7. Yes, we have water since during the lockdown. Uh, the president of Ghana actually paid for uh, water bills for the whole country for three good months. And, you know, that is one thing that people really appreciate. Like, he really helped those who live in the uh, slum areas and all that. Because people were home. They are not working. They ain't getting money from anywhere to pay their uh house rent and stuff bills yeah. were becoming plenty so uh president took the opportunity to settle that particular matter and throughout let me see since april till now water has been flowing frequently to 24 7. it doesn't cut off all right it doesn't cut off. yeah yeah so
with 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 situations like this i don't think there is any place in ghana here uh, you find it difficult with water situation unless the place is a new site when it's a new site you actually have a face uh, you know frequent things like this water coming on and off and but when you are in a place where it's developed uh, you won't really experience things like this because in 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 each and every house in in let me say accra basically which being the capital city uh, almost everyone has a, a tank in their houses where they store water yeah yeah and you know mostly to most people have the boreholes in their homes people have extra dams in their homes where water comes in itself and then uh, they they use it they use it yeah yeah okay so sure. that's that's um same as uh, the case in nigeria uh, we also have our overhead tank here where we pump water and store in and use when we run out of it, we pump again. So someone is asking if rainwater, rainwater is safe for drinking. Um, most people don't drink rainwater. I know that people in, I think, rural areas, they do that. But for people in the urban centers and the cities, mostly what they do is they, 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 they drink um, bottled water, water that has been, um, that has undergone certain, you know, um yeah how do how do i put it you know it's certain chemical uh, yeah. processes uh, that they package it you know those bottled waters that's what yeah. many people drink yeah, let me show you the other water. one yes continue i'll show you the other one yeah that's uh, actually processed water and in ghana here we have um, different types of it like voltaic ever pure and they are all being processed you know which you know when when water stays in a in a bottle for some days it, it smells it actually smells so they they process all this and they are they contain chemical they contain chemical and one thing i'm i'm saying is that our forefathers have been drinking water from the ground from from rain when it rains they drink it and nothing really happens so i keep asking myself these um, whites are telling us that uh, water which is not being processed well has some kind of gems in it and all that so we should take that one which is actually killing most people because most of the foreign waters where we, we take when whenever you travel to any of the advanced countries and other stuff just check some of their pro products contain fluoride you see and we have anything that contains uh, anything that has water like the bottle waters and other stuff every company and how they oh, produce salt. this exactly exactly that is the shot uh, uh sachet water and the bottled water yeah. yeah yeah so these are the the options we have so for people in the urban areas you find this on the streets very common they hawk it common. on the streets yes and they hawk this on the streets and then people also buy this and put in their houses for drinking. So for those who don't want to drink tap water, uh, drinking tap water is not common. This is like what you find mostly in most homes. Then for some other people, this is what they go for. So for me, this is what I drink. I drink this. Then I keep this for backup when there is no water to cook or do other um kitchen stuff i use this like this is what i use to cook today so you just punch many of these and use it to cook or do other um cleaning of dishes at all then this is for drinking yeah but so also so you have we should be using rainwater because it rains heavily i noticed in nigeria especially during the rainy season as a form of storage and we can filtrate it and it can be reused, even if it's just used for toilets. But when rainwater traditionally you could drink, but because of the environment that we've dirtied up, human beings, a lot of rainwater to in certain fair, parts of the world is not good to well, drink because it's polluted. But in that Nigeria where our pollution in the rural areas isn't as much as in the cities, you could, you could in theory drink the rainwater 
or let it filtrate naturally and collect the rainwater. But for farming, I would all suggest collect rainwater for farming and you can filtrate it yourself. It's not a difficult process. It's very simple. You're, you're replicating nature. That's all. You were about to say something. Hello. Yes, Flo. You were about to say something. You have the floor. I actually have to agree with ID about that, but you can actually drink rainwater. But yeah. I actually agree with ID about that, but you can actually drink rainwater, it is pure. But Nigeria is more muted than LA. Can you hear me? Can yeah, you hear we me? Can, hear you. can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, 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 I can hear you. I think your phone has a delay. That's why. It's more polluted, yeah, to be honest. Um, yeah, um, it's more polluted than LA. But uh, what, what, I'm, what I was trying to say is that when you think about the mineral water that you drink, which is bottled, uh, that comes from the rivers, is actually rainwater that is naturally filtered through the rocks. Yeah, there is a delay with StreamYard. I don't understand it. But um, I'm giving up hope because I'm using like two tablets on the phone right now to carry on with this. <laughs> yeah, so thank you so much, everyone on the panel. I think we are going to start rounding off this conversation. I, I see it has been productive so far. Um, we've shared a lot of insights and, you know, a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a delay. Never ID you go ahead. There's a delay on the, on her side. So yeah, so we're going to round up um this conversation for tonight. We we'll, we're almost three hours up. Oh, wow. So yeah. let's start, yeah. let's start uh, rounding up our conversations. Flo, if you can hear me, let's start with you. Your final words before we go. Oh, well, you know what? Africa is definitely the breadbasket of the world. Anybody that God has blessed to have some money to invest in it now before I get there and others follow behind, please take advantage of it. If you can set up co-ops, God bless you. If you can go in as a private farmer, God bless you too. That's the new black gold. I think she's she's done. Sorry for that. I'm back. Um, my network disconnected me. Um, so Flo, you you have the floor. Let's have your final words before we go. I think I think she she's done. Can you, can you, can you hear, hear me? me? Yeah, I can hear you, Virtue. I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, so I delete. No, but uh, thanks for everything anyway. Those discussions are always exciting. So nice meeting you all. Okay. Same to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you. So Thank much. you. Too. All Thank right. You. ID. Let's okay. Have My final word would be: I, I would like to see if we could collectively come up with, um, you know, a, a list of people within. Um, Africa that um, we could collaborate with. So whether or not they have land or they're good at um, farming or they're good at management, 
let's have a let's start compiling a database where we have points of contact where if anyone from the diaspora that has money that doesn't actually want to come or that does want to come there physically they could we could point them into the right direction so they don't have bad experiences of meeting the wrong people so with with with, with that said it will be good like your platform and many other platforms that i follow as well that are similar um if they could now start compiling a list of people and we verify those individuals and we know that they have the qualification or the knowledge it might not be they have the qualification they may have the knowledge for work experience that they can do the job competently that we can now pool our resources here because we should in the diaspora we should be treated as the bank where in africa you have the minerals so then we can combine together and start creating and building and build slowly build up and that is one thing i would like to see implemented so all and also have a, a direction of if i need to know who does this who does that where do i go because one thing i found through my investigation going back and forth to nigeria it was word of mouth i lost this person they will lead me to this person that will lead me to this person that will lead me to the source of where i can get that that thing and that thing could be just just been around the corner from me but i've had to go a long route to find out that it's around the corner from me because there's no clear signing there's nowhere we can go to find out who does what so these are the two challenges that delay us and delay people in diaspora from investing within Africa because we don't know who to invest in and we don't know where to go. So those two databases, if we could compile ourselves of people that are competent to do the job and, and where to go to get resources within Africa, because there's things that they have that we can go and buy, but we don't know where to go to conclude and to fulfill what we're trying to achieve. That's my final word. Thank you very much for allowing the platform race and everyone on the platform. Okay, thank you so much, ID, for coming. I appreciate your coming. Um, for your um suggestion, I think um one of it is you can go on the Nigeria Stock Exchange website, like um Stephanie mentioned earlier, and you'll find um companies that are into some of these agribusinesses, for instance, and you can start from there because if you find them listed on the nigerian stock exchange website that means they are valid you know and the government is um, has approved their business operation in nigeria so you know it's safe to contact them for any other information i think for ghana as well ghana should have a ministry of trade and investment and that yeah, you can also know. find such information from them so follow one you take from there and let's okay. have your final word um well, my, my final words is that um, to any anybody trying to invest into the agricultural system in Africa here should basically not get scared, but uh, do a bit of research and then you would actually be comfortable with whatever project you want to really start in Africa on this particular continent. Because someone asked a question in there that, why is it that it's uh, uh, diasporans are, are uh, able to acquire lands and then uh, you know make projects over here whilst we cannot we that we are here are not getting that opportunity and basically what what i am saying is that those who come up from there to down here to you know actually invest into things like this actually have the equipments they have the means you know they really because most of the people in this country that have the means to do that particular project wouldn't do it they wouldn't do it they wouldn't even bother they would rather try to invest the money somewhere that uh, the money would come very quick in the next two weeks one week or a month you know and that these are some of the reasons why uh, um, um, we over here is not that we are not getting the opportunity the opportunity is actually there but we don't actually have the means and the source when i say means and source the finance we don't actually have it that is why um, 
sometimes things like this actually uh, draws us back a bit. But I would also say, if anyone here, uh, if anyone is here that is, 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 is a diasporan, who is an African now and wants to do any business or already doing a business and you really want to advertise it, you can see any of your um, the YouTubers, you've been watching them and they are actually going to help you and even get you customers through their, uh, um, um, uh, their chances and what they do on the social media to let people uh, uh, help you sell your products. This is what I have for anyone watching this and whoever that is listening and the last but not the least is always take your measures very seriously don't always go out without the nose marks make sure that you are fully in the nose marks or uh, gloves and you have your sanitizers with you so that at least you can help us also fight this COVID because uh, COVID was never meant for africans it was meant for them, but we played stubborn and it entered into our continent. So uh, this is what I actually have for anyone watching us. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel too, guys. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank um, you. Well, one, before you go, there's a question on the screen. Um, if you can answer okay. it quickly, is it possible to do e-commerce in Ghana? Um, actually, I... I don't really have much knowledge on it. Uh, I can actually, whoever that asked the question, I would actually give a reply on this video. I'll come and put the, the reply in the comment section so that you can act, uh, uh, know if it is or it's not. Yeah, so thank you for that honest reply. So um, Jim, Jimmy, He's going to make inquiries and get back to you. But for um, the case of Nigeria, for instance, yes, you can do e-commerce. Um, we have some e-commerce platforms already existing. So, like, um, we used to have Jumia. We have Conga. Conga is 100% owned by Nigerians. It's an e-commerce as well. So a lot of things are bought and sold there. Individuals can also, I think, actually market their products um, through the um, platform. We have GG buy we have um, a jebo market so there are a lot of them you can actually set up and what people look for with the e-commerce in africa is um honesty they want to and um accountability they don't they want to be able to trust you because e-commerce is is not the traditional way we do business in africa so it's quite new people would rather go physically and see the product they want to buy feel it you know if possible try it on for clothes and all before they can pay so for e-commerce whatever you put on your website when people place orders and you deliver they want to have exactly what you put on that website you know they want to have it the same way it was portrayed on the website and if you do that consistently automatically the word goes out there that these people are honest they are genuine whatever you buy from their website is original it's it's real it's genuine it's you know original like i said so more people are going to buy and now with the covid 19 situation there's you know less need for people to go out some people have been indoors since this thing started so if there are genuine exactly. and trusted e-commerce platforms where they can buy stuff you know they will comfortably comfortably and conveniently do it from the comfort of their homes without having to go out so yeah that's uh, it i remember i bought something from online once i bought a dress and a shoe from um one of the e-commerce big it they used to be very big i don't want to call their name when the products were delivered to me i said no way what the shoe was okay. something else the dress was something else I never used the dress. I never used the shoe. And that was the day I said, I am never going to buy anything online again. This e-commerce in Nigeria. But, you know, okay. I'm not saying all are the same. Yes, final one. Yeah. Uh, with, with that, I, I just uh, check, checked that out on that. And we actually have it here. If, if you are in Europe, let's say in Ghana here, if you are in Europe and you want to buy some uh, provisions for your families, we have one online uh, market that does that and they will actually deliver it at your doorstep 
we have it and we also have other um you know business coming up within the youth that they do delivery by themselves like one i i, I ordered this online it's a cap i ordered from a, a ghanaian lady who is also a youtuber i never knew she does this she did this for me and you know we have the kente over here it's a nice brand and then she delivered it at my doorstep and then uh, i i really paid but you should always be careful with who or where you order your stuff make sure it's well trusted because i've introduced a friend to a certain company which is on instagram and a very big Ghanaian celebrity did that particular advert for that company and this friend of mine went to order a phone and till now the phone has never been delivered you see so th those are some of the challenges that people face so you have to earn the people's yeah. trust it's one thing to use a big celebrity to advertise but if you don't keep to your promise of accountability of timely delivery of quality people will call you out eventually and you'll be out of business before you know it sure. like my own experience sure. was not pleasant and i decided i am not going to buy anything online again ever since then i've never i would rather go to the market but if I get a trusted e-commerce platform where I can buy these things, trust me, I will. Because going to the market, Lagos Island market is is a hassle, very stressful. A lot of people, even, you know, even on the market, even on the market, you can decide to buy again now. Yeah, you see. So those are some of the things. <laughs> <about you>. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much for that one. You know, for people who like to bargain, yeah. it's easy to bargain in the market and get yeah. fair prices. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but you know, you still have people who just want to. They, they can pay any amount. So so far as quality is is guaranteed. Yeah. So. Yeah. thank you all so much for watching i've enjoyed this conversation just like every other conversation every every stream is like an interesting conversation uh, upon the other and sure. uh, i just hope that we all take concrete actions to um sure. see the changes that we want to see in africa invest do business and all um okay. all right so i appreciate all of you for those who want to make donations support me i have it on the screen Funny enough, when I do live streams and we have these, you know, really important conversations, somehow YouTube demonetizes the videos and I don't know why. So most times I don't get, but that's fine. Having the conversations are more, is more important to me and all. But if you feel yeah. like you can go ahead, that's my PayPal details, you, you make your um, support. So thank you all so much for watching. I, on this note, I'll say, good night because it's 9 9 01 p.m nigerian time so we've been on three hours and you know one minute so thank you all. i appreciate you everyone on the panel everyone in the chat room you you all have been so amazing thank you share this video this information is very useful let more people have um the access to the information and make use of the information as they need to and um, if you've not subscribed don't forget click the subscribe button and when you click it click on that bell so you'll be notified when um, i upload new videos or go live like this um for file one don't forget file one drop your link again let people go to your okay. channel support him as well you see he's a very resourceful um, brother as well when you visit ghana he's there to assist you you know show you around give you the information you need to get things done for yourself so i uh, like i said it is i've visited ghana and he made my stay in ghana um, very comfortable i felt like i was at home with my family so go support his channel as well okay thank you all i'll see you in my next stream next sunday or during the week if there is a need to um stay safe healthy and below abiding as usual Mwah. bye <laughs>